What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Reality Recap Edition. I'm your host, Nick, and we got the household here. We got Leah, we got uh, Justin, we have Sierra Robinson returning to the show. Hi. Uh, it's a bit of a, well, it's Sunday morning, actually. We are recording this section of Reality Recap Sunday morning because we have a, a special guest, Jess from Love is Blind is going to be rolling up uh, Sunday morning. She is in town filming something. I don't even know if we're able to say, but she is in town. And so we were like, well, let's let's get her to the studio. And the only way to make it work is to have some of the team come in Sunday morning. So here we are. Oh, okay. She's six minutes out. Woo. She's late, by the way. <laughs> um, I don't know if we're going to have the whole like Tom Sandoval discussion, but she was supposed to be here 17 minutes ago. I don't want to uh, cast any judgments or aspersions on the person who, you know, one might have wondered if she was the more high maintenance of the group, but she is late. But we're not going to interrogate her like we did Tom Sandoval because <laughs> we we're just a short of time. Tara Schuster will also be joining us this episode, uh, returning to the Vile Files. Should we let people know why Sierra has been uh, showing up? I think we should. Yeah. Well, Sierra, for those, I think I mentioned this on Ask Nick yesterday, yeah. but uh, Sierra is a, a friend of mine and Natalie's. We met her through Sarah and Wells. And then every time uh, we would get together, me, Natalie, and Sierra, mostly me and Sierra, <laughs> uh, we just talk about reality TV and Bravo. Yep. So I was like, you need to come on the show more often. And especially with Natalie giving birth to our lovely daughter, River, uh, Sierra has been uh, kind enough to, I don't want to say fill in because she's not necessarily replacing or filling in. You have good but taste. But it's, it's been nice to have her. People yeah. have enjoyed her company and uh, we've enjoyed having Sierra here. So Sierra, welcome again. <laughs> Thanks for having me. To the me. Vile Files. Uh, so we have, uh, we're going to kick things off as Love is Blind, obviously, because Jess is going to roll in here. Uh, we have a lot to get into. We'll get into Traders. We'll get into Bachelor. Uh, I think we got the Housewives of Bev Hill's reunion happen. Finale. The finale, finale, rather, not the reunion. We got a three-part reunion coming up. Mm. And I haven't started watching Summer House. I know Sierra has. Obsessed. Obsessed. Because there is we will be we will be dabbling in that in uh on that season. I don't know if we're gonna be recapping every episode. Well, we will be pot paying attention to what goes down in Summer House this season. Because we did have we had the pleasure of interviewing Lindsay prior to the season coming out. Lindsay Hubbard from Summer House. She was very gracious, very generous. She spilled some tea about her breakup with Carl. And I think now the big question is, not that I'm doubting Lindsay at all but you know we heard her pov yeah. now it's time to see you know well bravo's pov i don't know if we'll have a chance to hear carl's pov on the show we'll see but it's, does it add up it's looking good it's looking yeah. good i'm like now we're gonna see it play out in real time and hear a little bit more on carl's perspective but it doesn't seem to me that she was as blindsided as i think we're as blind as we as we want to be i was gonna say because she was like it came out of nowhere but now we get to see it get to that moment even last season there was like little notes of just like there there could be a little trouble in paradise mm. that i'm like seeing it come to fruition i'm like mm okay give me the details welcome to paradise yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah, that's a lot to get into. So and I'm, Vanderpump. I'm, and Vanderpump. So we uh, obviously will get into Vanderpump. It's gotten a little juicier. It has. This episode was a bit juicier than yeah. the first few. Yeah. I cried. You cried. Whoa. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, oh. Uh, it's homework tonight. The end of the episode with James. I, I, I got teary-eyed. I'm not going to lie. Did you really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. With Lala? Uh, no, with the return of oh, Graham Cracker yeah. Hippie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Spoiler. Uh, you know, I live, I live right <laughs> next to Vanderpump <laughs> Dogs. Theory. And I've... I'm just like, how have I never seen anyone? There's always some drama happening at Vanderpump Dogs. Is that like a dog? It's a rescue. I a rescue? Okay. No, no, they, they also do grooming. Grooming. They, I've, I've bought care. stuff from there before. Oh. Yeah, hmm. I bought dog toys. You never saw Lisa? No. Oh. I, every time I go in, I hope to see her, and then I spend money, and I haven't seen her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, eventually, maybe. I, maybe one day. Lisa keeps saying she's going to come in and do the show. Uh, pulling up in two minutes, Justin. Why don't you go down and let uh, Jess in, and we'll uh, we'll start the uh, Love Is Blind conversation, Exciting. and we'll roll in with Jess. All right. Well, uh, this batch of episodes, quick things out. Things have gotten really messy when it comes to Love Is Blind. There's been a lot of also like scandals, alleged girlfriends, relationships, alleged in um, the boys are the boys are messy, messy. Mm. The boys, the boys are, are messy. messy. So while well, they're out of the pods, uh, obviously we'll get to talk with Jess a little bit about her experience in the pods with uh, with Jimmy. 
but we have uh, we got Jimmy and Chelsea, Yikes. Jimmy and Megan Fox, rather. Yikes! Uh, Jimmy and <laughs> Megan Fox. McCaffrey and Megan Fox. <laughs> J- J- <laughs> uh, and then we have Kenneth and Brittany. 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 AD and Clay. AD and Clay. And we have Amy and Johnny who are getting married. No Amy questions Johnny, asked. Yeah. We don't think they're done. That's sealed delivered. The control conversation is bizarre. Like, I want to know his background because why does he seem so misinformed when it comes to birth control? I think their thing is that they both grew up, you know, without a lot of money. And so they're worried, especially Johnny. No, I hear it. I didn't grow up with a lot of money. I, but and no, I understand, yeah, like, I understand being responsible, safe sex, not having kids before you're ready. But have they even talked about condoms? He's, yeah, he's misinformed. Like, also, he's acting like birth control is some sort of like Fort Knox. Listen, if you miss, <laughs> if you miss, uh, uh, not that I, uh, not that I'm an expert. You miss in a day or two. You miss a day or two. Null like, and void. Things might slip in there. I learned this back in the eighth grade sex ed. They, and they told me the only way, the only sure way not to get pregnant is to abstain from sex. A thousand percent. You know, there's no, there's no guarantee. And that was your PSA of the day. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, you know, but that being said, if you read the directions and you appropriately apply a condom and then for extra measure, just pull out before Old Faithful shoots off, <laughs> you know, and, and says, uh, happy day. Uh, you're pretty good. Yeah. You know. What is it? 99.7% effective? 97? It's, I don't know. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I, <laughs> I just love that the alter- TMI. I'm a, I've been just. I don't. I didn't. I haven't even bothered with you know in relationships. You with know. birth control. In relationships, uh, you know, the pullout was really just kind of worked for us. You and know? I will say, birth control is incredibly controversial right now because a lot of women are going off of it yeah, because, because of the effects it affects that your it's hormones. Had. I went off of it. It it really messed me. Nally up and- never went on birth control uh, because of yeah. you know the the hormonal aspect of what it can do to her body. And I was on and- it for over ten years, and it really messed up my. Yeah system my last three years i cried every day so yeah it's just as hard you know so i think it's valid that uh, a visectomy is in on the table if if he is requiring amy to get on birth control but like yeah just you know what like i know again no sure thing but again if i if you wear a condom put it on appropriately and and just don't get greedy (laughs) don't get greedy you know as a guy just when you get really just pull out you know yeah, maybe they cut it out of the conversation, but I feel like they've not even have they brought up the condom conversation? They're not sleeping together as far as I like I feel like they've made that clear is that they have not yet engaged in no, anything. They haven't, so, yeah. so what is his fear with the condoms is what I'm con- what I'm confused about as well. Like do you think it's just going to slip off? Like, is it a fear or is it that he just doesn't want to? I don't know. He just seems misinformed. He yeah. just seems like no one really sat him down. And talk to him about, like, he skipped sex ed, Mm -hmm. safe sex. I do like that he's not putting the full responsibility on Amy, though. He said, you know, I know that there are many options for men birth control wise. So I like that he's not just demanding she go on birth control. And I mean, we'll see how it plays out. But I like that he's offering suggestions that he could do as a man. He does seem like a nice, respectful guy guy just a little ignorant when it comes to like sex education Mm -hmm. you know i'm honestly wondering if he was did he grow up in some sort of like hardcore church organization he just seems a little bit he seems also kind of detached from like spoiled because he did say that like past exes have always been on birth control so i think he just assumed that like when we hit a certain age we all just jump on the pill he just assumed he's acting like oh you're on birth control then he's just like Good to go. Swinging yep. it around <laughs> like no big deal, but like again, not not fully effective. Not fully effective. Yeah, and not that I, uh, I'm not implying that anyone would be dishonest about their birth control, but like, yeah, I mean, there are messy people out there. There are sloppy people. There are forgetful people. Let's say Jeremy had to take birth control. Would you trust Jeremy? Nope. I love how you're pronouncing his yeah, name. Yeah, Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy. 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 He literally spells it with every letter, too. It's Jer- Jeremy. Jeremy. <laughs> how do you say it? How do you say it? <laughs> well, Jeremy is Jeremy. how I think Jeremy. he... Jeremy. Say it. Jeremy. But, but, <laughs> he spells it. He does spell it crazy, but Jeremy. I don't know Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy. But like, would you... If, 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 if there was a birth control for men, and maybe there is, I don't know. Yeah, but, there is a pill. And let's say it required you to be diligent diligent and responsible and jimmy was like yeah no i'm on birth control would you would you trust that no i wouldn't 
Not at all. If you had asked me two episodes ago, I would have said, yeah. And he's just acting like, well, if once someone says I'm on birth control, he can just like <laughs> has as much sex as possible. But if not, then he can't even touch her. Yep. <laughs> uh, how old is this guy? And how co- and as, a, as a former software sales executive, I want to know why is everyone, all the guys sell software? Every single one. It seems like. Do they? All the ones who got married. It's got to be a big uh, Well, like Clay, Clay is tech sales. And then the, and Jeremy's they're all software salesmen. sales. They're all salesmen. They're all salesmen. <laughs> they're all software. It's also, it's just different names for software sales. Is that like a booming business in Charlotte? I, guess, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it's a good business to be in. It's a, it's a good, you know. Work remote. And I don't know what Jeremy does, but <laughs> he seems to Barry's be doing bodies. <laughs> All right, bring her in. Jess is here. Come on in. Hello. Hi. Let's go. You're late. Let's go. <laughs> we don't have time. We don't have time for pleasantries and intros, Jess. <laughs> okay, let's get into this. All right, here, wear this. Sarah. Jess, it's so nice to meet you. Hi, it's so nice to meet so you. So nice to meet you. Oh, my goodness. All right. <gasps> get those headphones on. I put these on? Yes. Get in there. <laughs> no, we were just talking about two, your castmates in birth control. Okay. Clearly, I don't know anything about that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, she's a comedian. Ha ha ha. I keep forgetting his name. Blonde hair, birth control guy. Johnny. 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 Mi- very misinformed. Did any of the ladies talk to him about his fear of condoms or his miseducation when it comes? He acts like birth control is the end all be all. I didn't talk to him after the first day in the pods, but I'll say this. In Johnny, we trust. Like, we Johnny, we trust. And Johnny, we trust. Johnny's I mean, a good one. He's the best one. So despite his lack of education when it comes to safe sex and birth control, he is a stand-up guy. He is. We're going to stick beside him anyway. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, welcome. It's, we're glad to have you. Glad you can finally make it. We won't. We had another guest late a couple weeks ago and really went viral. We, we, will, we, won't, we won't give you such a hard time. But you made it. We're glad. We're, we're I'm glad here. I made it. I'll make uh, up for it. You had a really epic moment in the pods. I guess you could say that. It was great. Yeah. So let's <laughs> let's let's go back to the pods, if you will, for for our sake. What was it about Jimmy in the pods that made you go? This is my man. This I'm is, so glad guy. you're asking me that. No one has asked me that, and it just kind of looks like I'm falling in love with nothing. Like he's giving me breadcrumbs. But our connection was so strong. He was so funny. Like that's like one of the most important well, like traits to me in a man is that he has a good sense of humor. So was it a good sense of humor or he was funny? Because I don't, have we seen a Jimmy joke? <laughs> Jimmy joke. Yeah, they didn't show a lot of it. They just showed a, more of our like serious moments. The hot wing date, the like small clip of it that you mm-hmm. did see, that was like the closest to it that I can say. Okay. Um, But like we just vibed really well. It was really easy from like day one. And I, I can, I can be pretty serious. I can have a very serious tone about me, but there was something about him that was like so disarming. Okay. Like we just had fun. We had so much fun on all our dates. And I just, I want that. I want someone who kind of like brings the fun. And How did you get on the show? Oh my gosh. So they had been casting in Charlotte for a couple months and I'd heard about it. Everyone heard about it. And I, I had been getting messages on Instagram and stuff about it. But I thought, I was like, you know what? I've never seen anyone on the show that had a child. So I just kind of looked right over it. I was like, they probably wouldn't cast someone who had a child anyway. So one night, it was like late in November of last year. I was like poking around online and I found the application link. And I was like, well, let me just look at it and see, like, see what it's about. And I saw on there, they had questions like, do you have a child? Would you be interested in dating people who have children? And I was like, okay. You just lied. You just know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe they do. So I just filled it out on a whim thinking I, never, I would never hear anything back from it. And then the next morning they called me. The next morning you got a call? Have they ever cast? They've cast parents before. Have they had, we, they had just. This is the first? First, you're the first parent. That was shown, yeah. Wow. Pioneering. You're pioneering. I hope so. And do you feel like as a representative of single parents out there, do you recommend future single parents look for love and love is blind? Absolutely, I do. Okay. I would say it's not for the weak. Okay. It's not. And I know it wouldn't work for... Any parent, I know, like with a newborn or like a toddler, which, by the way, congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. It probably wouldn't work for them um, just because like the time away is really hard. But Autumn, my daughter, she's 10. She's almost 11. So she's very independent. And it, it, it worked well 
for me and my dynamic that I have with her dad. So if, if it works for you and you have the support going into it, absolutely, for sure. Okay. So much of this, obviously, show, we love this show. It's Love is Blind. You People don't get to see what the castmates look like. A lot has been made of your moment with Jimmy. Your thought of by many is to be, I guess, conventionally attractive. You seem to be aware of that just by the whole EpiPen you know, you're going to choke. Yes. It was Next, awesome. But, thank you guys. We, we love, <laughs> we, we love a, a self-aware queen. Uh, and I am, yeah. and I'm a confident queen. However, when I said that, it had very little to do with appearance. I meant that in the sense of like, I know how much I have to offer mm -hmm. my husband and my partner. And I mean, I do, I love myself. And there's well, we love, but you, you did say when you see. I said when you see, see what you missed out on. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no! Don't get me wrong. If the shoe fits, <laughs> and, 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 like, and people want yeah, to know, make it you're, about you're a humble appearance. queen, you know. But we all, we all appreciated that. I guess my big question. <laughs> it was off-putting to some people. <laughs> well, listen, it's a, it's a very popular show. Yeah. If you, if you're going to have some critics, mm -hmm. you, you, you're, you're doing very well. The rest of your peers have more critics. You know, if you're not pissing off someone, you're doing something wrong. You did a great job. I'm trying to adopt that mindset. Yeah, work on that because uh, <laughs> it it, it'll, ser it'll serve you well. It's true. It'll serve you well. That being said, you clearly went into the pods with the best of intentions and really tried to take the experiment for what it was and very seriously. And you clearly had no conversations about looks. You didn't ask him questions about looks. You didn't get into questions about yourself regarding looks. Uh, watching it back. Uh, when did you become aware that you were competing with Megan Fox and did it piss you <laughs> off that that conversation came up? Given that you were so invested in Jimmy and that you clearly were invested in the process, you put all your chips in on Jimmy and then all of a sudden Megan Fox showed up. <laughs> and I'm just wondering, like, what, 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 when did you find out about that and how did you feel about that? Chelsea and I were very good friends throughout the entire process and we never saw each other as competition. We really didn't. And so watching it back and seeing her say that, I I personally did not see it in a way that she was using that as leverage at all. And naturally, and a lot of people don't see is sometimes you do have conversations about appearance. I mean, naturally, when you're thinking about marrying someone, even though that's not what it's about, you do kind of want to know. Okay, sure. Yeah. No. Um, so even yourself, did even though, because we know a lot of it's not shown. Mm -hmm. Did you, Were there any moments with any people where it it came up where at least some conversations around looks happened that maybe we didn't get to see even on, even on your end i think that i naturally come off as very confident i think someone someone or two may have asked me if i was attractive and i probably said something along the lines of i don't know it depends on who you ask okay um but there's some people you could talk to and kind of assume like like clay clay you know, I think when he and I were on a couple of dates, appearance may have come up, but not. He's got swag. You can hear his yeah, swag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Clay's also very confident. And he, I think, maybe even said once, no, I know I'm attractive. Oh, he said. Oh, he's like, okay, so, spoiler. But, but a like, lot. not as like a selling point, though. Just another just confident moment. Like, I know who I am and I like my. Name. How did Jimmy describe himself? Like, what was, how did you see his confidence level in the pods? Okay. The, we have to talk about this. Please, yeah. Because. Because it seemed like all the women thought he was some big swinging dick. Right. We were in shambles over Jimmy. Jimmy was almost every person's top pick first day. What was it? Because I don't... Jimmy... Did like, you, I don't, okay. but, and he seems... And I, I, I've grown to really enjoy Jimmy on the show. Okay, relax. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and no one has, like, given me a hard time about the fact I was calling him Jimmy with the juice. Yep. And no one's wanted to know, like, why were you asking him that? Because I thought he had the juice. He just had that, like, swag about him. He Jimmy had game. Mm -hmm. He had game, which would I don't think would have worked in the real world. But in the pods behind the wall, he had all of us just completely folded. Like before we would go on our dates with Jimmy, we'd all be so giddy. And also his voice. If you close your eyes and listen to him talk, you know, he's got that like deep voice that you just kind of like want to listen to. Well, you all said I mean, that, though. Dopey. They all said that uh, you visualized him as this like hunk because I of like did. his voice. And like, what were you what were you imagining? Like, what were you seeing? I was imagining like, so you have to close my eyes and think about it because I, <laughs> I know him now. Um, I was just imagining this big, tall, just like a bearded like man. Uh -huh. Like, I don't know. He's not. Who was funny? He? How tall is he? I don't know. Maybe six foot. Maybe. Maybe. What were your thoughts when you saw a picture of him? Uh, again, like before you go into the show, most of us had already given up like 
you know, the expectation of what anybody would look like. So I didn't have an idea. I was so attracted to like the guy I knew on the other side of the wall. But when I saw what he looked like, I was like, okay, that wasn't what I was expecting. Hmm. Did you find him attractive? Appearance wise, like he's not what I would typically go for. So the scene with you and Laura talking at the bar, was that still like you're going off of your idea of him? You hadn't seen what he looked like yet? Right. Well, also, let's be mindful of the fact that like, I had had copious amounts of wine. <laughs> okay. Because you were feeling a little, it. you're looking a little sassy. I was. Yeah. I w- the wine had me feeling way too sexy to be talking to anybody. <laughs> I had no business. I well, had- it's interesting because uh, Jeremy and Sarah uh, had that late night rendezvous. And I know we there's maybe more to the story that we'll get into the next week. But from your point of view, I think a lot of people were wondering, you know, because shit um past seasons people have like what who's the couple that switched up after the pods and now married and had kids zach, you, zach and bliss thank you zach and bliss so huge fan when you left the pods you know what part of you was like all right well he's in my hometown i know we're gonna no. all get together we're, see and that's the thing that the the wine night I, I had with laura it didn't really accurately depict like what i was feeling like i was going through the stages of like a breakup mm-hmm. where like i was kind of I was still thinking about like what could have been, but I didn't want what could have been. I knew when I left the pods, he and I both felt a mutual understanding. It would have never worked because we could have fun. We could cut up. We could like do all the service level things. But when it came down to like the in-depth moments where we needed to communicate and like work through things, we couldn't. And how did you figure that out? Like how much time did you guys talk to figure? Because you talked a lot in the pods and in the pods without any physical like measurables. You guys were like, hey, you're my person. I love you. Like, how did you go from that to figuring out, despite looks, you weren't compatible? When it came down to, like, conflict resolution, and, like, I came to a point where I realized I had given him so much, like... You know, I shared so much about my childhood and my past and previous relationships and my expectations. Like I was giving him all the answers to the test. Like this is what I want and need from a partner. And he had shared a lot with me about his personal life and his childhood as well, which is kind of what we bonded over. Um, But when he read my letter, that was kind of like the tipping point because I thought that was going to be the moment that he kind of met me where I was. Mm -hmm. Not particularly like choosing me, but just saying, you know, expressing his feelings of some kind even if it wasn't going to be and he couldn't and so i didn't take that well and you know you can see us kind of like going back and forth and then he just froze yeah <laughs> and then was his reaction to you being a mom as as awkward in real time as it seemed to be on television <gasps> oh my goodness a little bit just because i actually had shared that information with every other guy that oh, I had okay. dated. Jimmy was the last person I shared it with. But that was only because the conversation had kind of prompted itself with everybody else. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, what are you most proud of? That's an easy one for me. It's my sure. daughter. Or do you like children? Do you want to have children? Those conversations came up so much sooner with everyone else. And mm-hmm. um, with Jimmy, and it wasn't like days into the pods. I think that might have been like day two or three. And it was the day that we were all talking about like intimacy. You know, and I was like, this is a conversation I want to have with my partner, but I can't with you here because my daughter will see this and that's not something I want her to see. And he was like, why didn't you tell me sooner? And it wasn't particularly awkward. Remember, I I, I couldn't see him. I could only hear him. I couldn't see his facial expressions or his body language. But watching it back, I was like, oh, he was off put by that. Mm -hmm. He was taken back for sure. And then hearing him describe like talking to Chelsea where, you know, she's like, I've been divorced. He's like, yeah, well, fuck, man, that's he was like, compared to what I had to hear before. I heard bigger news today. (laughs) I was like, oh, my God. You know, listen, being a a parent is a big responsibility sure. but like someone getting divorced also like depending on the divorce there might be more red flags and it just so happens a kid in itself isn't red of a red flag it's no. just a responsibility sure. a divorce who knows what they're bringing in uh you know to the relationship right and i mean if he hadn't received it well i wouldn't have taken offense to that i don't think that you know that's something i should just expect someone to be okay with i would have respected it but the thing you don't see is we had so many conversations with her after the fact we had talked about like vacations we wanted to go on with her and like what okay. our dynamic would so be you like felt like he it. warmed up to the idea of being oh this, yes and he told me he was like that's not a deal breaker i don't mind and he we talked about her so much like he didn't do anything that led me to believe he wasn't okay with it okay all right i really just have one like kenneth is a big 
discussion point mm -hmm. uh, on this batch of episodes with his breakup. Mm -hmm. Sure. Did you get to know Kenneth a little bit? Yes. Okay. So my question to you is, uh, is Kenneth one, like, I think people, when we, they watch the show, fail to appreciate the intensity of the experiment that you guys all participate in mm -hmm. and the decompression that comes both even after the pods and then after, well, you will only experience the pods, but, <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't make it and then the going, <laughs> going to the, like the honeymoon or whatever they, they call it to living in the city. Is Kenneth just kind of introverted guy who maybe handled the decompression of the experiment poorly and maybe just not the best communicator? Or is he just kind of an asshole that oh, no. a lot of people think he is with no, how not at he, all. the breakup was? Or is he even more nefarious than that? So what was your no. read on Kenneth? No, no, it, he, it couldn't be more opposite. Like Kenneth is like one of the most pure, like amazing human beings. And like all of us were lucky to know him. Some of us, when we were dating him, were like, I would be afraid to marry him because he's so good of a human. I wouldn't want to do anything that would ever disappoint him. Like he's such a good man. And we all hated seeing how their breakup was shown because they had hours of filming already that day. Or I know that they had discussions off camera about how they were moving towards more of a friendship than um, like life partners. And they had already come to that decision, I think, before it was filmed. So he was just kind of over it. And then that's what was shown was he was just like, we've already had this conversation. I don't really want to talk about it anymore. But they had to, for the sake of telling the story, they had to film it. And he was just like, whatever. Do you think the conversation he had with AD had anything to do with it? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Um, because you can kind of see the chemistry with uh, Ken and Brittany kind of like fizzled out after they met. I think it had more to do with just like the physical attraction between them wasn't there. But what did you make of the time where Brittany was like, hey, I need more affection. And then Kenneth was like, I, I woke you up in the middle of the night. one thirty in the morning. <laughs> I cannot. Oh, my God. I As remember if like, wait, what? Like I showed you was... affection at one thirty in the morning. Yeah, Who wants affection <laughs> in the middle of uh, your sleep? And she was... has to get up at 5 a.m. And he kind of made it seem like he was waking her up to have sex and she didn't want to. And he was like, well, fine, then that's. That's me shooting my shot. <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think I remember her telling me when they got back that like it was great. Their vacation was great. She was they were very affectionate. And then it just kind of like tapered off. So I don't know. Okay. And what are your thoughts on the Jimmy Chelsea relationship after the pods? They kind of get into an argument in this episode and he calls her clingy. How would you have handled that? That was one of the other things that was telling to me. Um, but he and I wouldn't have <laughs> worked. I'm a little bit more like confrontational, I guess. And I thought that when I saw it, I was like, maybe there were some things we didn't see because it kind of goes from like zero to a hundred. You didn't think Chelsea came across as clingy? I th yes, I do. I think the way that she was shown makes her seem very clingy, but there is a lot her between wine. <laughs> there was a lot in their relationship that was not shown. And I, I will say that her feelings were more than valid. What can you add to that? I think that she and I were both kind of sold on the same dream in the pods with Jimmy as far as like uh, he was ready for marriage. And he he was like, I live in South End, which where we live in Charlotte is like the social scene. Mm -hmm. and so if you are d talking to a guy and he's like, that's where I live, you're like red flag. But he's like, I live there, but I don't I don't ever go out like I'm trying to settle down. I'm, I'm a homebody. And then I know when they got home, because, again, Chelsea and I are friends. I knew what was going on. I, he was going out a lot and he was kind of not upholding the commitment. Well, he was going out a lot. Yes. Yeah. I know that there were some things that he had kind of promised both of us uh -huh. that, you know, when it came time to like live life with him, that's not really how it was. So her feelings were valid. I mean, I think that she was very emotional, but you're in, I mean, it's like an incubator. It's, yeah. it's really hard to not be. All right, Jess. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to you right now today because, and then you're going to be back on going deeper. You, I know you're not leaving the couch, but for audience's purposes, <laughs> we're going to say goodbye to you right now and say hello to you on Thursday. So, uh, Stunning. thank you for, thank you for answering some of these rapid fire questions. We know you have to, uh, catch a flight, but it's been great to meet you. And, uh, again, we'll talk to you on Thursday yes. as well for going deeper. And then we'll find out finally what it was like for you to actually meet Jimmy face to face <laughs> and then get your insights on some of the other drama going on, like Jeremy and Sarah and things like that. And then Jimmy, Jeremy uh, and Laura, Jeremy and, La Jeremy and Laura. Oh, Jeremy, Laura and Sarah. And then Jimmy and his, his girlfriends, his oh, throuple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> not thoughtful. <laughs> All right. It's always fun to find ways to no longer be wasteful in your household. We don't want to be wasteful for a variety of reasons. One, it can cost a lot of money being wasteful. Two, no one likes to be a part of a problem, you know, especially when we want to take care of our beautiful planet called Mother Earth. And that's where our good friends Papaya come in because, confession, Natalie and I have been guilty of running through a lot of paper towels. Now, we're new parents. There's a lot of messes, spills, things like that. We're always wiping down the counter. We want to keep our place clean. And we have been running through a ton of paper towel. And that also gets pretty expensive. And then we discovered papaya. If you haven't heard of papaya, they make reusable paper towels. This is exactly how it sounds. They're just paper towel-like material that don't break and you can reuse it a ton of times and it's great it's not like a washcloth that if you reuse it a bunch of times it starts stinking here's how papaya works paper towels that come with a hook so you can hang it wherever you need it we have a papaya paper towel in every room of the house now because you know we got messes everywhere and if you are tired of spending a lot of money on paper towels and you feel like you're burning through them you got to invest in a papaya paper towel papaya is one of the best swaps we've ever made we use them for everything like spills counter dishes and more plus they're all natural so we feel good about using them around our baby. So if you want to stop buying jumbo packs of paper towels like we did, go to papayareusables.com and use code V-I-A-L-L for 30% off site-wide. Again, that's papayareusables.com and use code V-I-A-L-L for 30 percent off. That's a huge savings site-wide of everything ha that papaya has to offer. So stop wasting that money. Get some great reusable paper towels from papaya. And trust me, you will be glad that you did. All right, Peloton. The other week we uh, went out, Nelly, her mom and I, we went to uh, a place where there was a gym. It took us like 20 minutes to park, same place that people had to park in the gym. And then I couldn't think how much time these people were wasting looking for parking, checking into the gym. Oh my God, it was probably like an hour and a half before they even got to their workout. Such a waste of time. Think of the calories you could be burning on your Peloton bike when right now you're wasting it looking for parking at whatever gym that you signed up for. I mean, you're probably paying for parking, you're paying for your gym membership, and then, oh my God, if you try getting out of that gym membership, the worst. All those hassles around gym memberships go away when you get yourself a Peloton bike and there's so much fun. You can be competing with your friends across the world or this country. Some great trainers work out to your favorite music. And if you don't want to buy a bike, you can rent a bike with Bike Plus Rental. Tell us about that, Allie. So this is the genius solution if you're like hesitant to commit and fully buy a Peloton bike, which I think you'll still really enjoy. But if you are a little, you know, anxious about doing that, you can do the bike rental system. So you can either do the Peloton bike or the Peloton Bike Plus. There's a couple different options for rentals, but your rental fee every month is going to include the bike, cycling shoes, and your membership. So it's just all bundled together and it's really convenient and you can see how you like it. So stop wasting money, time, and the weird conversations you don't want to have with people at the gym and get yourself a Peloton bike or Bike Plus rental today. It just makes so much more sense. You'll have fun working out. There is absolutely no reason not to do it. Wherever you're starting, get moving with a Peloton bike or Bike Plus Rental at www.onepeloton.com slash bike slash rentals. Again, that's onepeloton.com slash bike slash rentals. Terms apply. Okay, well, now it's Monday morning. What a fun conversation with Jess we had yesterday. Well, we're all wearing the same clothes. Justin and I are still matching. I love matching. that we let people know we recorded on Sunday. <laughs> And now it's Monday, but we also made sure to wear the same outfits so people wouldn't know. I know. I was kind of wishing that you guys joined Leia and I because we accidentally yeah. twinned. So we were hoping you did an outfit change. Oh, true. I do have very similar shows, but like Love is Blonde for continuity. Yeah. You know, with the golden cups. But anyways. But yeah, you did, you did tell us to wear the same thing and then still said that it was two different days. You know, so. like sometimes it's fun to let the people know how the, the cheese is made a little bit. Um, it's okay. It made picking my outfit this morning easier. I was so going to say, true. saved me 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. so. Now, uh, also, let's welcome Allie, uh, who decided to join us because... <laughs> <laughs> it's not like she's usually here. Uh, I was like, hey, no, so you don't have to join. All I do is just get off. shit on here. Like, yeah, fine. Thanks for finally coming to work. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and is, Tara, is Tara with us? She's here. Tara, come on in. Come on into the studio. Welcome Hi. to the show, Tara Schuster, everybody. Woo! Thank you for having me. Uh, get on in there. What have you been up to? Oh, you know, just watching a lot of reality television. Watching a lot of reality all of this, time. ma'am. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the show. What was, the la you. what was the last time you were on? It was our old studio. Yeah, it was your old studio. I think it was in maybe this time last year when my book came out. 
My second okay. book came out. Uh, anything new in life? What's new? Um, yeah, I mean, just a crazy year closer. There you, there you go. Just a crazy year of promoting the book. I mean, that's like when you're doing a project like that, you know, it's everything is about that book. You're speaking about the book. You're thinking about the book. You live the book. So I've had a pretty boring year, actually. Just all books. Is that boring? Well, it's very uh, focused, mm -hmm. a really focused year. I spent the weekend, uh, my parents are in town because of the baby. Yes. Yeah. So they got to finally meet River, which was fun. It is surreal to see your parents hang with your kid, oh, especially my dad. Like with my mom, I was like, okay, yeah, I've seen you with babies before. But there was something that made me more meta for me to see my dad playing with my daughter. Then there was a period of the weekend where I was explaining why Travis, Kelsey, and Taylor Swift are such a good couple to my dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because my dad was like, oh, that Taylor Swift, she really is impressive because they watch, oh, there's a Netflix documentary about her. Uh, I don't think it's the heiress to her, but there's some sort oh, of documentary. Miss Americana. Miss Americana. Miss Americana, yes. It's amazing. My parents watched Miss Americana. Which one, Nick? Not You're too talking recently. about Miss Americana? Um, and my dad had a lot of positive things to say about Miss, Miss Swift. Uh, but then he was just like, I don't know, man. I just don't really get that relationship. And I'm like... <laughs> Well, let me tell you why it's such a good relationship. <laughs> um, yeah. Let and me take I, out my PowerPoint. Yeah, I had to explain to him how 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 challenging it it would be to be Taylor Swift uh, and to date and the expectations around uh, her. Um, and that tra uh, Travis Kelsey is one of the few men in this world made to uh, withstand the uh, intensity of uh, dating Taylor Swift. But it was a fun conversation that I had with my dad about Miss T. <laughs> It was fun. So cute bonding over Taylor Swift. It was. Yeah. It was a conversation I didn't expect to have with my father. So that was a, a good weekend. And then my mom made uh, chocolate chip cookies, which was great. They were good, too. I brought them in, yeah, to the Sunday crew. Yeah. Um, and ate a lot. I yeah, Something about having your parents in town where you just forego any res dietary restrictions. Well, I feel like you also kind of get to be like a kid again because they're yeah. like, let me, let me give this to you. Let me yeah. make this for you. And you're like, oh, all right. Yeah. See, I thought you gave us the cookies because you weren't eating the sugar. So I thought no. it was like, that was your way of like avoiding it. It was definitely my way of, I brought four cookies and like, these are four cookies I won't eat. I don't have any willpower inside my house. <laughs> my willpower starts and stops at the grocery store. If it's in my house, it's gone. It's, it's gone. gone. You know, actually the other week I had to, I threw away Sour Patch Kids and Milk Duds. We, we were gifted Sour Patch Kids and Natalie brought some Milk Duds. Um, she bought two boxes. You could have brought it one. here. I couldn't. No, it wasn't going to make it through the night. It it's wasn't, dangerous. It wasn't going to get through the night. You know? You know what I'm saying? Like, sure, I could have brought it here. Had I not thrown them away, I would have eaten both of them with the intentions of bringing in them into the studio. So I, I, I had to pu put them in the garbage and then, like, spray something on it. I was, uh, <laughs> I was, I was Meredith. Meredith did that on Sex in the City. No, Miranda. She? That's oh, exactly Miranda. what I was thinking the Miranda. entire time. I was like, up oh, some The chocolate dishwasher. cake. Yeah. yeah, the dishwasher <laughs> soap. Yeah, that was me last week. Yeah. I, I ate it out of the trash can. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, so we had Tara. We had yes. Justin yesterday. Oh. From Love is Blind. Oh my God. What would, would What do we say? need to download, Jess, about? We just went through everything. We were like, how is the pod process? Have you been watching Love is Blind? Oh, yeah. She's up. She's <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect. So she like, has her EpiPen comment. People are saying Jess is like a really beautiful girl. Yes. And essentially, she was pretty humble. She was like, we're all beautiful women. Like, I know who I am, and I respect and love myself for who I am. And she kind of just yeah. ran us through that process. There was a lot of, like, pretending that they're all blind. <laughs> I, I've noticed that on, on this cast. Like, we can, we can loosely mention that some people look a certain way and other, you know, there's a traditional yeah. level of attractiveness. But when you ask the cast, no, everyone's beautiful. Everyone looks the same. We're all <laughs> gorgeous in our own way. It's like, yeah, sure. Okay, whatever. Did, did you feel like it was damage control from her comments about, ooh, when he sees what I look like? Like all of that? Um, I, Probably a little bit from her point of view. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's always interesting talking to, to cast. She did say that when she made that comment, she was talking about what you missed out on, not how I look. Yeah, so which I, I... What I, does that mean? Love, 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 Jess. Thank you for coming. She was a sweetheart. I thought she was very articulate, well-spoken, very interesting. You could tell there's a fire, mm -hmm. you know, like a, she's got some sass to her, which I think is really compelling. 
I did not completely buy that line. And again, damage control, like yeah. you said. But listen, I, I empathize with not only Jess, but anyone. Like, listen, they to, to go from zero to 100, from obscurity to being, you know, just a Joe Schmo, Joe Sh Jane, Sh Joe Schmo. <laughs> Jane Schmo, Jane a Jane Schmo, Jane Schmo. Jane Schmo. Jane Schmo. Uh, Jane. <laughs> it's a lot, you know, and from our stand, like from my standpoint of loosely like being on the Internet, you know, uh, of a love is blind content just seems to be a fan favorite. You yeah, know? she seems to be well liked. You know, we all like, but I'm sure she's getting criticism on some end of the Internet and she is seeing that. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. so from her POV, her perception of. Her, the criticism or her likability might be very different from my POV of hers. Right. So I'm sure she is, you know, when she is giving that answer, I'm guessing she's giving it under the lens of addressing anyone who's ever criticized her for the comments that she made and, oh, you're think you're all this and blah, blah, blah. And that, you know, yeah. But of course she was referring to her. <laughs> It looks. Yeah, duh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what else would she be talking Apparently, about? Apparently, she was saying it was her, her charming personality, which, which is the charming. whole package. Yeah, the whole package. Okay. Is what she was trying to say, or like that it wasn't to put down Chelsea's looks. I think she was just trying to say, like, I'm the full package. I, You're really going to miss out. And I'm like, yeah, a statement like that kind of does insinuates that there's some sort of comparison that is happening there. Like, once you see what you're missing. Right. Once it's you not see. as if these cast members are in the um, community, or like the, the communal rooms, blindfolded. Yeah. You yeah. know, like it's not, they're not actually blind, right. you know, so they do get to look at each other. Right. There's an element of that, but it's, it's, it's fascinating to see the cast afraid to even in, like objectively talk about looks. I also do think that uh, them all being in the same city since it's like they, they've just created a whole new friend group as well. So I'm also kind of like, I wonder if they're careful yeah. about what they say, because it's like, I'm going to see you again. It's that not is like, another element of Love is Blind. No. They they filmed these shows like a year ago. Right. Uh, they all they, they're all in the same city. They are building friendships and rapport get, go beyond the petty and dramatous that we want from them. <laughs> right. They're like, talk some shit, yeah. you know? Like, They're like, I'm Please. evolved. I've known this girl for a year. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, but wasn't she awful in the pods a year ago? <laughs> yeah. It's like, wasn't like, wasn't she really whiny? Like, well, you don't love me. It's your favorite. <laughs> but why? Why? You're an asshole. Oh, oh God. Her. <laughs> Sorry. You walked in and you didn't give me one kiss today. Oh, God. You didn't kiss me. You didn't tell me you love me in the right way. <laughs> oh, my God. I would. Ugh. I couldn't see. Yeah, I couldn't. Oh, my God. I don't think I would have made it through Special Forces if they had to play Chelsea whining in those, <laughs> in those headphones where I had to listen to those torture music. If it was just Chelsea the whole time being like, why? Oh, kiss me. Oh. <laughs> what I loved about that was Jimmy kept being like, no, wait, I did kiss you. Remember when I kissed you here and then I kissed you here? And she kept saying, you didn't kiss me. I was like, Ugh. what's going on? I don't think I've ever seen a man take inventory like yeah, that. Like, he, was like, <laughs> he was like, two. the second I walked in, right when you did this. And I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Got to talk to my boyfriend about this. <laughs> Clingy? Clingy? Clingy. <laughs> yeah, no, I called you Clingy. Uh, and then when, <laughs> and then she was like the whole sex part. We were like, well, well since we're bringing that up, I don't. <laughs> oh God, I was. Oof. I don't think we we're giving Jimmy enough of credit for some of his one-liners when dealing with <laughs> Chelsea. I will say I was shocked because Why don't, is it Chelsea or Kelsey? Chelsea. 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 I keep you got want it. to say Kelsey. <laughs> Chel it's Megan Fox, if you want to. Yeah. Can I, yeah, can we just call her Megan, <laughs> Megan Fox? Fox? Much yeah. easier. Miguel, Carrie Underwood, whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but no, I did not like Jimmy from the beginning, essentially. And now I'm like rooting for him. I'm like, get out, get out. And so it's interesting hearing people say that Chelsea's actually a lot stronger and a lot like um that she stands up for herself a lot more by herself than she is in a relationship. Because I feel like Jess was saying that too, that it was like, I'm not used to seeing her like this. It's actually shocking. And I'm like, mm. it's interesting because I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, how can you be one way like that? And then to everybody else, they're like, no, she's strong. She stands up for herself. And I'm like, I'm not seeing that. But I could see it with someone like Jimmy. Like I've been listening to the show and you commented that Jimmy's like the hot jock and it became a competition between Jess and Chelsea. So if Chelsea's trying to win that competition, yeah, but she kind of sort of knows Jess is, you know, she's got a look. 
then she's super insecure. And, you know, even from my personal dating experience, when I'm dating someone who I know isn't 100 about me, you know, when you just know you're like sinking, feeling anxiety. Oh, like, does he like me? Does he like me? You know, it's really hard to control that. And then she's on a TV show. I, I can only imagine that her insecurity was like uh, no, 100%. Truly. I just how she is projecting that insecurity is tough to watch. She has no control. No. Not holding back, yeah. <laughs> None. No. And it's like, I mean, like, what's great about Love is Blind, and it's not, Jimmy is really like, it's, it's peak Love is Blind um, kind of uh, reaction, but like, it's these people act as if, and people do this in a relationship, as if they can convince themselves that they're in love. No, I love you. No, I no, I I said I love you, and I do love you. I love you. It's just like it's like I don't know. You can keep saying it, but I don't know if you're convincing who. Are like, you convincing you or me or like what are you what are you trying to do, Jim? Every time he says we probably have the most perfect relationship here. Everything's great. It's go. You're like, wait, who are you talking yeah. to? <laughs> Like, who are you seriously? trying to convince? <laughs> yeah. 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 Who are you trying to convince? And it's so it's weird to see him um, when they were in the Dominican Republic. And it was it was weird to see him projecting this like amazing thing when really like you would see him not even pay attention to tell Chelsea to be with AD like everyone else has eyes, too. You know, it's not like some secret everyone can see how you guys are relating and they weren't affectionate at all in public yeah i mean it was giving me a fair like it was like his perspective and her perspective and they're two completely different Mm -hmm. things she's over in the corner crying because he's he's like my girl loves me we're the best we're the best couple yeah (laughs) she's literally crying she's like right there about you (laughs) (laughs) now she's got allergies you know (laughs) Uh, what do we make of his friendships? Can someone have woman friends? I, I'm, uh, no. Like, I don't know. That that might be my own insecurities, but I just feel like, especially when I'm older, past like 25, like platonic outside of work and like having an actual purpose, just hanging out on a Friday night, sleepovers, whatever. I just, no, 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 no. But there is speculation online that Jimmy has had maybe a romantic relationship with one of these friends. Oh, no. Yeah. Jimmy, yeah. no. You yeah. don't bring someone you slept with to meet your fiance. Yeah, I. That's we've, wild. We've talked about, I mean, I've talked about this on the show in the past. I've, I, You know, in my single days, you know, when I was single for years. I think every straight man who goes through a, like a long period of being single and like if they're in their 30s and they're still single which is i'm not saying that is a bad thing you know but if that happens um i think every straight man has like that girlfriend that long before they might have hooked up with on some random night but they were like this is weird there's nothing here we're actually just friends and they are just friends like there's no like sleeping in each other's house they're not hook up buddies or anything like that they are truly platonic friends and because they're so single, it totally works. And that friend will play that girlfriend role. You know, mm-hmm, they'll right. go to, and, and again, they're not playing the girlfriend role in the um, caressing or intimacy or things like that, but you, they will go to dinner or right. you'll go see a movie. And you might even talk about each other's dating. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll give each other dating advice, but having the comfort of the woman friend, the companion, the person you can go to to meet some of your emotional needs. I think a lot of straight men who are single in their 30s have that type of friend. I had that type of friend and more than one occasion throughout my 30s. And they it was totally, completely platonic, like to the point of like, you know, years later, you're like, we actually hooked up. That was fucking (laughs) weird. You know, (laughs) nevertheless, to both of your points, he brought this these friends on a national television show. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who met his now fiance. That's a choice. Yeah. Like, don't you have other bros, Jimmy? For me, it was redeeming because I thought Jimmy was kind of douchey in the pods and then like in the Dominican Republic. But the second he brought female friends on the show, I was kind of like, okay, maybe like they're there to check him. Like I saw him less as a douchey person the second he had like female friends because a lot of like playboys (sighs) won't admit that they have close female friends. So that was my take. I I feel like that's what he was trying to do. But I think right now the internet is speculating that something happens. He's hooked up with one of them. Yeah, I think minus those speculations, in my personal opinion, it's okay for a man to have close female friendships. If these speculations turn out to be true and he's had 
a relationship with one of them or both of them, then I think it's very different. But I think that without that sexual history, I don't know. I agree with Justin. I think it kind of made me like Jimmy more that he, you know, his two best friends in the world are. I think that's great. Women. But I think to uh, Chelsea's point, when Nally and I started dating, you know, it's not it's not like Nally and I started dating and she's like, well, do you have any women friends? And I'm like, yeah, well, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like that wasn't the conversation. But like as our relationship evolved and became more serious those friendships like yeah am i still friends with these women yeah well like keep in touch and i mean i've had women friends that there were truly no there's no past with you know but like yeah you maintain the friendship but i'm no longer like grabbing dinner with them every once in a while i don't go like hey there's this movie i want to go see it like i'm not <laughs> doing that shit with them anymore the friendships drastically change yeah the yeah. dynamic changes because now i'm in a romantic relationship and I don't need that person to meet my emotional needs, even though, you know, I have a I have a fiance or I had a girlfriend then, you know. And so I think that was probably his desire to like be like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm a girl's guy, you know, like I have girlfriends. But it just in the context of those are the people you want to introduce to your now fiance, you know, it was a weird like just introduce him to your bros. Yep. You know, because you're only going to trigger Megan Fox. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, when I was single, I had like guy friends and whatnot that we go out to the bar, wing woman, the whole thing. It's 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 and never had any desire to sleep with or whatever. But I'm saying there is I feel like especially for single people where it's like, but if we did hook up, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It wouldn't change the dynamic of our friendship or whatever it may be. And I'm like that to me, when you have a, a, a significant other, it's like the respect of putting them on the pedestal of like, you are my best friend, you are my partner. And then everybody else kind of starts to like fade away or you have to change the dynamics of those relationships or else it does create an uncomfortable situation. If it's like yeah. your best girlfriend's being invited over for dinner every other night or we're going to the movies and it's the three of us, like, no, yeah, respectfully. I think, <laughs> I think changing the dynamic of the relationship is different than telling someone it's over, you can't be friends with them anymore. So right. we'll see what happens here. But I think that I don't think Chelsea has a right to say cut it off. Mm -hmm. But I do think that she has a right to say the relationship between you and your girlfriends needs to be different moving forward. Makes because me now I'm you can't be friends with them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Can you bring up the cast photos for me, Justin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whining. I just can't with the whining. It's aggressive. It's aggressive whining. I will say I do like her web presence on TikTok, though. She's very much like making fun of herself. She, oh. she does it. Yeah. She, she's I think she's handling it very well and tactfully that I'm like, OK, I can I can I can respect that. Well, that's in her control <laughs> as opposed to this, which is in <laughs> Netflix. This is, this so they're going to do it your edit. No. Nope. Well, I mean, I don't know if Netflix edited it in her whining. No, that yeah. was her. I mean, yeah. she did that. Yeah. <laughs> but she can edit that out when she posts it on TikTok. <laughs> uh, uh, Julia Fox came to her defense, though, uh, in the comments. Uh, she agrees with you, Justin. She thinks that she does resemble Megan Fox. I think she does. I also do. I, I want to be on record as saying when she said that, I was like, oh, I, I kind of see what what she's kind of saying. I could see but that. That's not really the point. <laughs> I mean, I mean she there was a TikTok where she's that. like, hey, if you've ever been my friend and you've ever told me I look like <laughs> Megan Fox, please come forward. That's she's missing the point. She is missing the point. I mean, I'm sure you've been told that you look like some beautiful people. I was actually thinking about that when she said that. And I was mm. like, actually, no, no one has ever said, like, you look like a celebrity. So I, I well, was. A lot of, OK, well, you're maybe the but we, a lot of people. Yes. But yes, you know, in small towns across this great land of ours, <laughs> you know, that's what people do. They're like yeah. they see a celebrity and they squint their eyes to their friends and they're like, you got a beard and dark hair. You, you look like him. And it's like, yeah. oh, my God. And yeah, I guess maybe you kind of resemble that person, but you don't go on Love is Blind and use that as the only descriptor that you have of yourself to set a false expect. It, that's the point. It's like I no one's doubting. That someone told her this. Right. I, I, I totally believe, just so you know, Chelsea, I believe that yeah. you've been told this. <laughs> I don't think you've made it up. That's, that's not why she's receiving the criticism. It's that she was like, no, I've been, you know, that, that she told that to Jimmy it was, and it was clearly, you know, played a role in his decision. It was misleading. Yeah. It was very misleading and not the point of the show. Yeah. But I think what we've witnessed is Chelsea 
have a, a spiral, that this whole show for her has been an anxiety, insecurity spiral. And we're like witness to it. It's like you're witness to your best friend who's just like falling apart because of some dude. And so I would believe that she actually is um, like much stronger and a bigger personality outside of this one circumstance where she's kind of sucking, you know, <laughs> like she's letting these insecurities run away, constantly whining, like no emotional regulation of any sort. Yeah. When they're in the kitchen and she's whining, she's to Jimmy, like Jimmy's clearly, he's panicking. Yes. He's just like, I don't know what to say or do. And like when he first calls her uh, needy or clingy, clingy, clingy. And then he was like, I can't believe you know, you're an yeah, you asshole. Why? And he was like, then he was trying to be like, oh, you know, I, I didn't, but you are kind of being, and he was trying to think of any word else. <laughs> like he was trying to bring up his thesaurus of like other, he's like, but you were clean. Like he didn't have any <laughs> other word to describe it, but he knew he could, he shouldn't say that, but he was, he was trying to articulate that she was up his ass. Jess did point out uh, that, you know, because on the show, in, in Chelsea's defense, on the show, it is aired as if Jimmy in the pods is like, listen, I don't go out. Of like when people ask me, I, I tell people I'm not a big drinker. Uh, I don't go out a lot, you know, especially now when, you know, I'm, you know, yeah. you know, fiance, but even my whole life, that's generally what I've said. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not a big partier. I don't drink a lot. Th those are true statements. You know, if my friends who know me, some of my closest friends who, you know, can drink a lot more than I do, you know, compared to them, it's, it's all relative, right? But like, have I been out to the clubs? Yes. You know, have I gone out two nights in a row? Yes. Have I been shit faced out of my mind? Yes. You know what I'm saying? So like, he was kind of smart to say less though, because like, if he were to say more, he would have activated her more versus mm -hmm. he just kind of like, uh, okay. Well, then he doubled down and he said the that she's the one who initiated the sex. And oh, that's God. where I thought that from a, I'm curious what the, what the ladies think, you know, because this show's watched by more women than men. And I think it's a, it's it's tougher for the men out there to, you know, it's I don't think men are often given the benefit of the doubt with these shows. Uh -huh. You know, um, I think Jimmy saved himself because the stereotype is that all men are horny and all men want to have sex and blah, 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 blah. And for Jimmy to be like, well, actually, I could use a little bit of a break there, I think kind of saved him. Because like, I don't, I think it was a, a moment where you're just like, oh, he's, he's overwhelmed even like, because it's always like, well, you, you want to do this, you want to do that, you'll go with your friends, but you'll still have sex with me, you know? And he's just like, no, like, I really, I need a pause on everything about you, Chelsea. I, I, I feel like that endeared him to a, a lot of people, but- To uh -oh. the viewers, yeah, maybe. Yeah. For me, like being in that situation, I was like, oh, that's not helping you at all, sir. Oh, no, no, it wasn't helping Yeah, okay, him. I was like, no, no, no. she's already hiding. I mean, to America. I think <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think to America, I made him look good. To Chelsea- I was like, you're activating her all over again, because now you're telling her you don't really want to sleep with her when you're like doing it as like a favor. Or like out of pity. And it's like, that would make me, that would send me. That for me was the lowest of the low for Jimmy. And I already didn't understand his appeal at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the pods, all he's basically, he, he was like, I don't have the words. I don't know what to say. Really quiet. I didn't understand what was interesting about him even a little bit. And then when they're standing there, it's almost like he's blaming her mm -hmm. for wanting sex. And it's, if someone said that to me, if I was in a fight with my boyfriend and he said, well, you're the one who wants to have sex. Like, I didn't even want to have sex with you. It would be a devastating moment. Did, who brought up the sex part? Did she bring it up or did he bring it up? Like, did she bring she, up? I think she brings it up. I think she brought, think she it, brought up, it up and then he retorted later being like, well, if we're going to talk about that, yeah. then. Yeah, I think you're maybe. right. Yeah. yeah. See, because I'm kind of team Jimmy there. I mean, I get that it would send her and I would. There's it's, no reason to say that, though. Yeah. Any human knows that if you say, well, you're the one who wanted to have sex, that is not going to get a good reaction. Like, how is that helpful? How is Jimmy helping himself? In oh, that I don't, no, no, I don't think he's helping himself. Well, I think there's helping himself to the audience and there's helping himself yeah. to Chelsea. But, and I don't think in that moment he was trying to help himself. Well, maybe he was trying to failing. 
failing because yeah. um, <laughs> I was like, he's not cognizant. I think in that moment, I mean, I think he's I think he's actually very aware of cameras being around and everything. But I don't think he was cognizant in that moment of being like, this will look better to viewers. I think he was like, I, I don't know what else to say or do mm-hmm. with you. And like, if we're going to if you're going to keep attacking me or accusing me, then I'm going to set the record straight. I didn't want to do that anyways. And it's like, mm, I get where your point was coming from. But the delivery, the moment and the timing, I just don't. It's not helping you. It's not doing any favors. Yeah, I feel like he only said it because he was she was rapid fire yeah. with yes. all these reasons that he's the worst. And then he's like, well, if you're going to bring that up, I didn't even want to have sex that night. You initiated mm-hmm. it. And he was it was just he was. Just feeling so snowball, snowball. Like, yeah. Just shut up just... already. Yeah. <laughs> like, walk away. Like in a yeah. moment some, like that. If someone was whining to me like that, I, I, I would have to walk away. I'd be like, I can't do this with you right now. Like we'll we'll come back when we both calm down. But I'm gonna take a walk. I'm gonna take mm-hmm. a drive. I will be gone right. for the next couple of hours. Like clingy, <laughs> yeah. clingy. She was acting like that was the worst thing you could be in the entire world. Yeah. Well, I I don't know of any woman that I've ever met who enjoyed would enjoy being called clingy. That's true. No. But it, it wasn't like he said, I don't love you. I'm out. There's something wrong with you. He obviously was spiraling. I mean, he looks panicked in the moment and trying not to say clingy, but that's the only word that that comes to mind. Well, it really kind of, t- you know, shows what he really, fe- you know, because, you know, when you're in love, you don't mind your partner being a little clingy, mm-hmm. you know, like, or you just tell them in the moment being like, Hey, yeah, I need, <laughs> I need a little, time, I need a little space. space, but like, if you're feeling that and then it has to come out in a fight, I'm like, you're also not being completely authentic in your relationship either. Like he had to say the word clingy to make his point. Mm-hmm. He couldn't yeah. just be like, Hey, <laughs> like, no, no, <laughs> I don't think little... you're understanding me. You're fucking clingy. Yeah. Uh, what do we make of Kenneth in the breakup? I was shocked that they had never made out before. That was very surprising information because for, at the beginning, they were my favorite couple of everybody. Same. I, I love them. I thought this is going to last. They really get each other. And then to find out that all this time they haven't even kissed mm. was really weird, I thought. Yeah. Well, we found out from Jess that that breakup, according to Jess, was uh, acting. They've already had the conversation. Yeah. Oh, that's not. Oh, that's well, not the moment. Well, sometimes in reality TV, this happens on The Bachelor. Um, you know, when they're making these reality TV shows, the general thought process with producers, you know, for all the criticism producers will get about you made me do this, you put me in this situation, a lot of it comes down, or you you blindsided me. I you should have told me you were going to do this. It's not because the producers are evil or Machiavellian. The the premise is we're not working with actors. We're working with real people and we want real authentic reactions to real situations. And so to do that, they have to have the cameras going all the time. They don't want to give people a heads up. They don't want people to anticipate things because they want the they want the initial reaction to be caught on camera. That doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been scenes in The Bachelor. Sometimes people are in the water, you know. Uh, and they have to take their mics off. Mm. And sometimes things are said in the water, like big moments, like, hey, I love you, you know? <laughs> and they're like, oh, we kind of wanted that on camera. You know, you know that term, first time you, you say I love you on The Bachelor, kind of a big moment. Well, you know, if that were to happen where they don't have it, they might say, we're gonna have to do that again. Mm-hmm. Some right. people are good at, you know, leaning into the moment and being actors and some people aren't. And hearing that from Jess, I think what we saw is Kenneth isn't an actor. Um, and he was more like, yeah, I don't really need to do this again. I'm on my phone. And He was reading from, and what's the her, script what, from his phone. What's her name? Brittany. <laughs> Brittany. She was more like, no, no, I can do this. Yeah, I can. We can lean in. I yeah. can lean in. Because according to Jess, they, they had both agreed that this wasn't a thing, that this relationship was going nowhere fast. And they didn't have it documented. So that scene was a bit of a recreation. And does that change your perception of Kenneth? Not really. I mean, now that you say it in that moment, it makes a lot more sense why he's so just neutral, doesn't care, bye. But he had been on his phone. I mean, I guess it depends on when they actually first broke up Mm -hmm. because he's on his phone. That's all we see. They get Mm -hmm. back to America and he's just on the phone. So do you think they broke up in the Dominican Republic, you know that boat when they're on the boat and it's like the boat of death. Yeah, and nobody's talking, and he's like dolphins. They saw the dolphins. They're like, oh, 
Actually, yeah, never mind. Something to talk about. <laughs> he also gave himself away with that, too, because he was like thankful for the dolphins. And then he was like, Cause now you can get me to talk. And it's like, so you're consciously making the choice to make this awkward. I thought in that moment, I thought, I don't know. There's something very wrong in this situation. I want to defend him a little bit because I just saw an introverted man who uh, I think people forget um, just how intense these environments are and the decompression that is required of these people. And Love is Blind a little different than The Bachelor because they go from a bubble, an isolated bubble, to then kind of less than a bubble on these like honeymoons and then almost no bubble back in their communities access to their phones and their family and there's a bit of a decompression and and ha people handle these situations all all different ways and some people need to be alone some people decompress on their phone is was clear was he on his phone way too much obviously you know was it a bad look obviously but also they could have just simply shown all those moments and the boat ride you described we don't know if that was a 10 minute boat ride or a 50 minute boat ride, you know? And like, I I'm in the car with Natalie and sometimes we don't talk. The only thing that was different, she clearly wanted to talk. Yeah. And that was, it, it made it seem like she was uncomfortable with the silence. Well, that doesn't, again, mean anything other than maybe that's just two different people where he's comfortable in silence as an introvert and she's uncomfortable with it, feeling like, well, if you don't talk to me, that maybe says something about your feelings for me, where all I could have said was, I'm just cool, like, chilling you know but that wasn't the vibe yeah and it's that also, wasn't the vibe at all his burrow was or what do you call it Fur brow was furrowed his brow was furrowed mm -hmm. he was seemed lost in thought somewhere completely different than on that boat where i totally get it you're in a car ride you're in a boat you're with your boyfriend you're not talking every moment there's actually something beautiful to be comfortable in silence but neither of them look comfortable. It, it doesn't help that they were sitting on two sides of the boat, too. Yeah, completely not touching. Yeah. And then Brittany would try to touch or try to do something, and he wasn't having it. Even the two of them on the front of the boat, though, when she was like lie, trying to lie on him oh, and yeah. whatnot, he, he made it very uncomfortable. And the thing is, I understand being an introvert, but at the same time, this is the partner that you're supposedly picking to choose the rest of your life with. Have a conversation on a boat. You, you're in the middle of a gorgeous ocean. There, it, Call out a bird. I mean, there's just literally anything that you could be we doing. We call the dolphins. To get to <laughs> an hour later. But I'm like, you, you You should be trying to be get comfortable with this person if you're claiming to ma want to marry this person. So I feel like the reservations in his mind about what was going to happen with their relationship was already brewing. Also kind of hated for, for him that the one thing that he really loved really kind of, I, I really didn't, like, dolphins in captivity is not a, is not a pleasant sight. No, no. Um, <laughs> Like, I was just more like, ew, yuck, <laughs> ick. And he's just l loving it. And I I'm felt like, so bad for him in that moment, no matter what. I was just like, oh, he's looking for anything. Just dolphins. Yeah, something. But he was into dolphins. He was. This he, boy he looked gleeful. loved Lit dolphins. Lit up. Yeah. Lit up. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> more than Brittany, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Brittany was like, great, I'll take uh, dolphins on aisle whenever. Like, <laughs> yeah. he's saying something. I just don't he I don't think he is the monster that the internet is claiming that oh, he is. Oh, does the internet hate him? Oh my god, for that breakup, they hate him. Oh, oh I didn't when, realize that. When he that. was like when he's like uh, when he's, he says like, "All right, now give me a hug so there's no beef." <laughs> I mean, like what a weird way to break up with someone, well, for pe sure. People just are hating <laughs> they're hating the fact that he was like, "Okay, I have my bags, I'm ready to go." Like the off-camera yeah. comment that was like on the mic, so it adds more context that he was ready to leave. Well, it well, just added the context that again, like this was a recreation. Yeah, exactly. You know. If and... that's true though, Britney is a good actress. Yes. Mm -hmm. I because agree. she was waterworks and he's just sitting there, I mean, on his phone. And it was just so uncomfortable to watch, you know, she's just fully breaking down and he's just like on his phone in another world that of, was what did it for me part of me doesn't think that she was like acting though because i'm also kind of like i feel like us as women are very like in touch with our emotions and i think she was very hopeful in the beginning that like this was her partner so i'm like regardless if they've already had this conversation or you're coming to terms with it the reality that this is over like that would make me cry in a moment well i can say from personal experience uh having had to recreate a scene or two um, it's a little bit like that. Yeah. It's, you're tapping into the feelings that you have yeah. already. And even though you've done that, you're, it's a little bit of method in a sense, but you're, you're not faking the feelings. You're just bringing them back. Right. You know, you're, uh, you're going there, you know, you're, you're just like, oh, I felt this way yesterday. I'll just remind myself how I felt and I still feel shitty about it. So we'll just do this again and I'm going to torture you. And he, you know, he, 
Kenneth still just doesn't care. Yeah. He's just happy to be out. <laughs> Kenneth is like, I checked out yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. He's like, I was checked out on the boat. I just don't <laughs> care. He's like, all right, let's get this overtime in and we'll be yep. out. <laughs> Do what do we think of Jeremy and uh, the Sarah? I mean, the fact that he, you can tell this guy is a smooth operator uh, because he was like, I left on my GPS. And knowing that, the, and then he left his phone in his car. Well, so he thinks he's a smooth operator. <laughs> right. So but he goes, Laura. Like, Laura baits him. He goes the whole conversation and be like, well, I gave you my location. My phone showed that I was at this bar or whatever area. Fans are speculating now that the reason Laura knew that he wasn't at where his car was is because his Apple Watch had a location. Oh. So people think that she was able to track, like the location updated with where he was actually physically moving. Oh, God. So they think that he hopped in Sarah Ann's car yeah. and drove to Sarah Ann's place. Idiot. So he thinks he's a smooth <laughs> operator, but. And it's true. I've that been smooth he operator in the her. sense that he is even thinking about that's that. That's true. You know, to. to, to that's I see. A, that's, well, that that's was a messy... his thing that he, that was his only saving grace is he's like, I shared my location with you. So how could I be lying? <laughs> and then she was like, oh, really? You want to, you want to talk about how you're lying? Like, I got you, yeah. red-handed. I, I love how she waited till the mm -hmm. end of the yes. conversation. She just, like, caught him, <laughs> reeled him in, then was like, okay, now let's talk about let's it. Let's talk about South End and why were you there at 5 a.m. I also love that she said she was sleeping, and she's like, nope, actually, was watching <laughs> the entire time. I, I did love that. What am I supposed to do with that? I was asleep. And then it's like, wait, so when did you get up exactly to check the location? <laughs> he got caught in his own life, for a sure. thousand percent. And the way that she did it was brilliant sorry but i do have to say maybe it's the editing but the thing we see before it is he's meeting her parents and she is so mean to him mm -hmm. she's not she, she's not nice no. I, I mean i've never seen something like that she sets him up to fail she says oh is something bad gonna happen if you're gonna be awkward with my parents like she brings all this negativity in and then she's just negging him the entirety of the time and her, her parents, parents were kind of like low-key like She's kind of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like without totally. saying it, they kind of said it. They were. Her mom was like, you guys are pretty harsh to yeah. each other. Also, <laughs> the dad. creative idea for Love is Blind. What if in the pods you get to meet, you, you, when you're down, right before you get engaged, you meet their parents face to face. You get to see what they look like. Oh, you God. You get to see what they act. You know, some people take care of themselves and they age gracefully. Some people... You know, it's a lot of cigarettes and alcohol from 30 and maybe it's a misrepresentation of how you might age. But I think it, is, it adds in a layer. Well, it would challenge the blind part mm -hmm. because yeah. you're getting to a see. A little bit of a taste. Yeah. Maybe like, a blind intro to them. Like there's a world where Chess's parents, you know, didn't take care of themselves. But didn't age gracefully. We don't know. I've actually not seen Jess's parents. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Chelsea's mom looks like Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, there yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, who knows what work has been done? It, like, it creates a, it creates more questions and answers, even though there's a perception of you getting information. That's what I love the idea about love, like introducing the parents, because you think you're getting more information. But in reality, it's creating way more questions and may potentially leading you down paths that, you know, it's it's like. It's like Chelsea saying she kind of looks like Megan Fox. You it's know? a challenge. Yeah. I feel like it's like a seed of doubt you could sow and then to really challenge, well, do you really feel this way about that person now that you see this? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that would be a fun wrinkle. Um, but yeah, she's she's not. It just wasn't nice. kind. And then I loved how her sister was saying, you know, uh, Hawaiian shirts. Like if my person is really into something, I want to be supporting them. Like, yeah, that's how a relationship works. <laughs> Why is this being explained to Laura this late in the <laughs> game? Yeah, Laura was like, no, it's an ick. It's an ick. Oh, and I'm over that. I'm over ick. just all ick. Yes, ick. me too. I'm, I'm like, come on, what, use your words. It You're was an adult. Fun for, it was fun for a minute. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was like a, like a nice little viral trend, and yeah. then it became- We're not five you know, anymore. Yeah. We have other words aside from ick. Like, I, I, I am sorry I have this habit that you don't love, but like- Oops. You know, <laughs> like, Can we bring oops back? Yeah. Oops. I want to see oops going viral. Good on Jeremy, though, for standing by his Hawaiian shirts. Yeah. I mean, Jeremy. Well, he, the, Jeremy will own. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, well, then there's all these like rumors about him and getting out of a relationship. There's rumors about Trevor having a girlfriend. What? Yeah, there's no. a lot of. Oh, that's yeah, a big one. There's a lot of uh, rumors about. Um, 
the, the men and the cast and things like that. The Basher gets this too. Or it's just like, what are the, what's the casting department do? There's like this meme, like a classic meme of a security guard, like this really old security guard. I don't know if you've ever seen it. And he is patting people down. And he's just, he's, he's waving his hands next to their bodies and then letting them go. Clearly not doing, he's just, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then the meme is like, this is how the Love is Blind casting department is qualifying <laughs> these people. But like, what is, what, what does the internet want? You know, like they these people aren't, they're not getting screened to have like nuclear codes. You know, they're not getting top secret information. They're going on a trashy reality TV yeah. show uh, that quite honestly, a lot of people wouldn't do, you know? So it, it says something about you if and, and not necessarily something, you know, negative. But if it, it says that you're comfortable with a certain level of being exposed, which is why it is surprising a, to me, though. And a level of messiness that yes. you might have. And I say this as someone who went on The Bachelor multiple times. Like, mm -hmm. I include myself in this. But yes, it does. It, it takes a certain type of person, you know? And we want messy. We, want, we love these fucking scandals. Why is the <laughs> internet acting like it's ruining our experience? Because the Love is Blind casting department is, is casting messy people. Well, that's part of the game, though, of being in the audience is hating on things. Mm -hmm. And, oh, my God, that's outrageous. That's if, if, if they were just a bunch of nice people <laughs> with no problems, that would be so boring. Boring. We would, would have a bunch of Johnnies that? and what's Amy. her name? Amy's. Amy's. Like I, every. No offense to Johnny and Johnny Amy. They seem like lovely, lo lovely people. But other than his whole. Birth control. <laughs> the birth control. I, they come on my screen and I cannot wait till they get off of it. I am so bored of them because they're, you know. They, in love. They're, they're functional. They're, they're love. <laughs> they, they're like, oh, you guys, I think you're going to get married. They're, they're not messy. I care fucking less about you two. <laughs> they're, they're taking dance lessons. Yeah. They're in the pool having a nice time with one another. Although the birth control thing is very intense. Very bizarre. That is an odd um, I, like uh, it's just a weird dynamic, especially to see on TV, like a conversation like that about birth control. We're just like, it's. it's I mean, what? Who scared them? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Someone what was happened. like, if you if if you put the P in the V, you will instantly get pregnant. It's giving Coach Carr from Mean Girls. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it is. If you have don't sex, have you sex will get an because STD you will get pregnant and, and die. And die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, don't have sex in the he, missionary he, position. Don't have sex standing up. Yes. <laughs> no, those were his parents. Literally. One hundred percent. Yeah. He's like, if she's not on birth control, you're gonna get pregnant, and it's the rest of your life. Don't even over. look at her naked. Yeah. Because <laughs> she might get pregnant. And you can tell how panicked he is about it because he starts bringing up the finances. He's like, listen, I'm just not in a financial position to have children right now. It's like a very serious, um, like list of reasons why not. So. You can tell it, it's he's really scared. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. How do you feel about uh, um, Clay just airing his dad's dirty laundry on a national television? Because it and it also seems to me like from from the get, Clay is desperately trying to let Ad know that there is no chance uh, we're we're gonna end up together. I mean, I've written two self help books where I just fully say every detail of my life. And I had a really um, rough upbringing where my parents don't come off in the best light. So for me, as long as you're being kind about what your story is, like it doesn't seem like he's actually out to get his dad in Not any at way. Not at all. So I'm okay with him bringing up the truth. If, if that's the truth and he's bringing up and he's not mean to his dad, what I'm not okay with is all of him altogether. Clay is one of my least favorite, although respect to him that he from the beginning is like, I don't, you know, I don't know about marriage. He's very upfront. But even in the pods when he's all about her appearance, he yells at her. I mean, I've just have never been a fan of Clay. Okay. Is that a hot take? Not to like Clay? No, I mean, no. I, I, I don't think yeah, he's like a fan. I, I think the men generally are, get roasted on this show. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think he's all right, you know. I don't think he treats her very well. Not in the pods and... Well, especially in the pods, then in real life, I think he's a lot nicer in person. But he real talk about people who are not in touch with his emotions. I mean, he's on a journey that's going to take many years to figure out those issues. Well, I, I think it's just obvious that he has 
no business he has no interest in getting married and then he went on a show where clearly that's the expectation in a very short period of time at yeah. that um it, it makes me sad a little bit um i always feel sad for people when it's like their childhood trauma plagues them so much that it's like mm -hmm. you might have a good thing and because of the sins of the father you're gonna yeah. ruin something good for yourself based off of the fear that you are your parents um so i just think he just really needs some therapy truly to like work through childhood trauma because i'm like i i always have a lot of sympathy for entrepreneurs and people who are trying to start up businesses it's not an easy feat um and I think he's very focused on that, which I think is admirable. But I also, yeah, I'm like, I don't think that AD deserved to be put through that. At mm -hmm. the same time, I think he was transparent about his fears. I just think he needs to work through them. Yeah. AD seems very intuitive. I love how she observes her peers. She's just like one of those people who is probably really great at giving advice, um, except when it's her own bullshit. Yes. You know, because she definitely sees an opportunity to like, because that's what Clay's, Clay's is like, I, Clay, Clay is with, he's saying a bunch of things, but at the end of the day, when you break it all down, he is saying, I have a ton of potential and I, I need someone to help me reach the finish line. That's basically what he's saying. Totally. Yeah. He's yeah. like a, he's a project yeah. to be taken on. I actually just personally learned for myself, you can't date potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's so hard for so many people because you do see, you know, in, in his defense, in Clay's defense, exactly what you said, he's at least self-aware enough to know he has issues. You know, he's not totally lost and he knows where he needs to heal. He knows where he needs to grow. That's so hard. Mm -hmm. It's a hard path, but it, it is great that he's at least aware of it. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Sunday, Sunday, Sundays. Hey, it's uh, it matters what you feed your dog. It really does. If you love your dog like we love ours, you want to make sure that you are feeding them healthy, good food to extend their quality of life. I mean, what you put in your body matters and what you put in your dog's body matters too. So make sure they are getting high quality ingredients, ingredients that you can get from Sundays for Dogs. Sundays is a fresh dog food made from a short list of human-grade ingredients. Sundays was co-founded by Dr. Tori Waxman, a practicing veterinarian. Sundays contains 90% meat, 10% superfoods, and zero synthetic nutrients or artificial ingredients. And it's also incredibly easy to travel with because unlike other fresh dog foods, Sundays does not require refrigeration or preparation because of their air drying process. Just pour and serve. And again, super easy to travel with if you want, you don't want to like not feed your dog healthy food when you travel. And with Sundays, super easy to pack and go. Every order ships right to your door, so you'll never have to worry about running out of dog food again. And when you start a Sunday for Dog subscription, you'll automatically get 20% off and free shipping on every reorder. Cancel or pause your subscription anytime. They're 100% satisfaction guarantee. Get 40% off your first order of Sundays. Go to sundaysfordogs.com slash V-I-A-L-L or use code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. Again, that's sundaysfordogs.com slash V-I-A-L-L. And use our code V-I-A-L-L for 40% off your first order of Sundays. I mean, speaking of healing, Vanderpump Rules, this episode, there was a lot of emotions, a lot of serious topics addressed. I don't know if anybody had any thoughts on specific ones that came up. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot, the Vanderpump uh, episode. And uh, I guess trigger warning, because we are going to be talking about suicide, because that's what the show wants to talk about. And it is an interesting challenging way to talk about a show that we you know we're here talking about reality tv shows and you know kind of making fun of it i don't know how i feel about vanderpump leaning in to this narrative um i've seen these types of questions thrown out online but it begs the question like there's there's two possibilities going on one tom sandoval is in fact struggling with his mental health he is having suicidal thoughts um he is in danger of self-harm and he is around production, he is around his peers, these people who have great access to him are deciding to take that mental health struggle and making it the main topic so far of this season, which seems fucked up mm -hmm, if that yeah. is the case. Or he's not actually in that place and they're making it a theme of the show. To me, the criticism goes towards the show more than anything. Like, 
make it about Scandival. And yeah, maybe Tom talked about this. Ariana's now getting a lot of heat for some of her comments, she said, kind of sounding, well, I think she even used the words annoying or annoyed when she talking did. about yeah, Tom. Did. And yeah, that comes across very poorly. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, Tom has told, ta- said this to me in person. Uh, he said this publicly about Ariana's mental health and why he didn't break up with her. At the same time, we didn't really talk about it. We didn't take it all that seriously. We didn't, we didn't, it wasn't a topic of the show. And so, yeah, it's like, I, it's kind of sucks that the show is making Tom Sandoval's mental health the main, like, and, it, and that's what the show is doing. The show is questioning Tom Sandoval's sincerity when talking about mental health. And I kind of hate it. Okay, so first off, I want to say I totally, if anybody's saying I'm having these feelings, I totally respect and I just, okay, yes, then then that's real. But if that's true and Bravo kept filming. That seems fucked up. It's completely messed up. I mean, if if there was a real suicide threat and they were just like, whatever, why don't we just keep the cameras rolling? I mean, they need Let's to- Let's lean into it. Let's ask the questions. They Let's need just, to help him. Yeah, like he it to, seems- uh, He needs to like be, um, the, um, when you, I've actually dealt with some of this myself. And the thing you have to do is be around people, get help. Sometimes people get hospitalized for suicidal ideation to protect them. So the fact that the production itself doesn't protect him at all is- it, and using troubling. it as a topic. Yeah. Is... Well, and you're also giving the audience exactly what you were saying. It's like you're fighting between two perspectives of do I feel sorry for this person? Because if I were going through what he were going through, would I be strong enough to get through it myself? I don't know. And then it's like on the other end, it's like you're making us question if he's using it as a manipulation tactic to get back in the group because he had such a horrible year previously. So it's like it's not really fair if you're trying to help him or revamp his image or whatever it may be. It's not really fair to put that on the audience because now it's making us kind of assholes. You know what I mean? Because we're sitting here being like the show's asking the question. Yeah, that's like yeah. the that's what the after show was even about. Yeah. You know? It's icky all the way around. Yeah. And then and then we're kind of throwing Ariana Ariana under the bus for even questioning his authenticity when the show is basically suggesting you know, suggesting that we shouldn't take it seriously because if, like we just talked about, if it was serious, then there's no way they would be leaning into it like they're leaning into it. And Ariana must know this, you know, and then we go into, you know, the New York Times interview where, you know, like, and I'm not an expert in these things. I I think you can be uh, a self-centered, narcissistic person who still wants the cameras rolling and still be struggling with your mental health. I mean, Tom Sandoval could be struggling with his mental health. I'm worried. I am worried for the guy. Like he doesn't seem all that well. Mm -hmm. And maybe he is a a product of this show and his whole life is being on camera. And so when he's just like, hey, to the New York Times reporter, are you recording? So the average person that seems like, oh, he must be fine. He he loves the attention. Maybe he just doesn't know any better. I don't know. Like. Also on the inverse, too, because I've recently started dabbling into Rachel's podcast. So it's like she's coming forward with a bunch of like his tactics and how she was treated by him while she was in a facility and him trying to get her out and saying that she's being selfish by staying in there and not coming back to the show. So I'm like, you have all of these like conflicting moments in timelines to where it's like, I don't know what to think. But I, again, I don't watch Bravo to question somebody's mental stability. Yeah. Speaking of, of Rachel, I actually, you know, we had Tom on the show. Yes. And I thought to myself, you know, it would be really interesting because that my whole premise of having Tom Sandoval on, we, we were happy to have sports as well, was to like check in. Where are you now? Him, him talking about this growth he wanted to do, he was committed to. And that was the goal of the interview, which we all know what happened and the f- response and the fallout. Like Tom didn't pass the test, so to speak, right. you know, in terms of, oh, maybe, maybe there hasn't been much growth. So I thought to myself, what about Rachel? A lot of people have written in, you got to have Rachel on. We, I've, tried to have, uh, I've, I've tried to have her on a few times, but uh, I, then I thought to myself, that would be, that would be something. What if Rachel could do what Tom Sandoval couldn't mm-hmm. come on this show? Yeah. Answer some direct questions about, you know, what they've learned. Right now she has her own thing and she's she's telling her own story without being questioned at all. 
you know, she has, I think, like a producer, like throwing her like some leading questions to help like drive the conversation. But like, you know, there are things that she is saying that's kind of like, eh, I don't know. Like, are you really taking accountability or, you know, is, is Tom Sandoval the easy target because no one's there to come to his defense? Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a huge opportunity for Rachel to come on this show and to deliver an interview that Tom couldn't to really separate herself from the scandal. Mm -hmm. uh, I've reached out to the, her team. I don't honestly don't know if they're relaying the information to her. Oh, interesting. They're just not even telling her. I don't know. I, I mean, I just, I know how I heart is. I think she went from being influenced by Vanderpump producers to being influenced by the, the people helping her produce her show. Mm -hmm. Rachel, if you're out there, <laughs> may, may, and may, I wouldn't, may, maybe she d just doesn't want to do, we have been very critical of her. So I can understand why she wouldn't want to come on here and do this interview. But if you're out there, Rachel, and you're up for it, I think it could be big for you. I think she would really separate herself to come on here and show a lot of growth. And it's not like we're asking that hard a question. It's, it's just kind of like, where are you now? What do you think about that? I might challenge her on a couple things. A couple things. I do, the dog. I, I, oh. I do feel like for all of Rachel's sins, what she did to Graham is the worst. Yeah. Yeah. And she addressed that. My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that she basically said that James trained Graham to be some sort of you know, devil dog. Yeah. You know, train didn't stop him from biting, train him to bite. I don't know. Like Graham was a biter. Yeah. Uh, as a an owner of a Labrador, they when they're young, they nip, they they bite a little bit. It was playfully they bite. I don't know if that's what Graham's doing. But why didn't she call up James? Why she gave this dog away and ended up in a shelter? Unfor I'm sorry. You have I I I need answers more than what she gave us because right now. That is, there is a, is a dog owner. Where's your heart? Where, where is your empathy? They have dog trainers. Like, well, just yeah, give yeah. him, give Graham back to James. To James. It's yeah. so easy. It seems petty not to. It is kind of unforgivable of all the things. Of all the things she did. Because it's a life. Yeah. It's a dog's life. It's a life. It could have, and if it weren't for Lisa Vanderpump's uh, foundation, Graham might not be with us today. Which is a wild set of coincidences that Graham actually got rescued yeah. and ended up with Lisa Vanderpump. You know, I mean, I, I do have to say that I have a lot of compassion for Rachel. Um, I actually, so I was there the night that Scandaval broke. That's right. You were. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, yes. I was on Watch What Happens Live. You were the bartender. I was the bartender. I was drinking spicy margaritas. I love that. And I was <laughs> so excited yeah. because Vanderpump Rules is my everything. I love the show. And I was like, oh, my God, great. Sheena and Raquel, it's going to be awesome. You know, so really excited. It's so fun. The environment's super up. But in the studio... Do you guys remember when Andy asks a question about who's the cutest, Tom Sandoval or um, Schwartz? Oh, yeah. Schwartz so, is, yeah. <laughs> I actually agree with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in the studio, when Raquel answered Sandoval, there was like this weird energy shift. Like everyone was like, oh, huh. Because we don't know any of that. When we're watching the show, all we think is Schwartz, Schwartz, Schwartz. Yep. And I even got asked a question by Andy about, you know, was Raquel stepping out of lines with Schwartz um, because of Katie? So it was like a completely different thing. Um, and so after the show, I went backstage and, you know, I'm like hawking my book. I'm giving it to like Sheena. She's so nice, so kind. And I go into Raquel's dressing room to give her my book. Um, and this is a little bit of context about why you need this to understand what happens next. But my book is all about how do you recover your identity after you lose something? You know, for me, it was a big layoff, other people, relationships. What do you what are the practical steps you can use to get back your identity and claim your agency? And it says all of that on the back cover. And it says, you know, it was blurbed by Glennon Doyle, who's this huge yeah. self-help kind of guru type person. And so she reads the back cover and she just loses it. She just starts crying. Really? Yeah. And I this... I didn't know her at all. I'm just a stranger who came in with a self-help book and she reads it and just loses it. And, and this I'm, is before, right before this broke. is March 1st. This is like hours, like maybe an hour before she's with Sheena and then the restraining order. This is like right wow. before. And I, you know, I didn't know what to say. I don't know her and I don't know 
any nobody knows about Scandaval. Right. So I just assume that this is about James, who's one of my least favorite ever of all of reality TV. So I just start saying weird things, <laughs> like trying to comfort her. I'm like, yeah, James is terrible. You've been through so much. But the the storyline at that point in Vanderpump Rules was Raquel is finding her identity. It was between that and or is she being shady with Schwartz? That, that's sort of where we were. So I had a lot of compassion. I'm like, oh, my God, she's trying to find herself. She's so vulnerable. She's breaking down. Um, and then I find out everything else and I realize, uh, oh, my God, she she must have just found out or something like that. But I do have compassion for her that this has obviously been hard. Oh, I have a, I, I have a ton of compassion for her in the sense that, like, I, you know, I have compassion for Sandoval in the sense that, like, he fucked up. What he's had to deal with the fallout has been brutal. And I think we continue to be critical critical of Sandoval because it just does not it's not registering with him mm -hmm. the accountability he just kind of needs to take to show, you know, like again, Tom's been like the poster child for anyone who's ever cheated and things like that. But like the conversation I've had to him have had with him online and offline, which is like, listen, are you safe to be in a relationship going forward? You know, like when I asked would you set up your friend with the woman? It's just more like, listen, like maybe you're not a bad guy. Like, you know, you see in the movies where like you're not going to kill someone, but like it would be dangerous for a friend of you to say, hey, I know this great guy named Tom Sandoval. You should date because right now you look like someone who's a, a victim of the moment and that you don't know how to set a boundary and no, you don't know how to say no. And that could be dangerous for someone who falls in love with your charisma and all these things that you might bring to the table despite what people think, you know? And with Raquel, like, I have a lot of compassion for her. You know, she probably was influenced by not only Tom Sandoval, but the, the Bravo world in general, but she is still an adult and yes, she still has true. to take accountability for her actions. And she, and, and, what I kind of say today is like she doesn't keep getting to blame Tom. I'm I'm exhausted with her. I don't even really give a shit about her stories about Tom Sandoval anymore. I might be the only one. I'm sure other there's I'm sure she's getting clicks, but I just I really don't care about more tea that happened between her and Tom that she wasn't willing to share then, but she's willing to share now because Tom's more even more unlikable. Uh, what I care from Raquel is. What have you used from this experience? Did you read Tara's book? You know, did, you know what I'm saying? Where you went to therapy. Where are you now? You know, are you someone who can learn from this lesson? How are you setting boundaries? How are you? A, are you a better friend? Are you a better partner? I, you know, I'm curious about that with Rachel. And I still don't know if we really have answers when it comes to that. I think she should be on your show. I think so, too. Watching the Schwartz and Sandoval, what I really liked about you and all of that was you were being fair. And if not charitable, because you gave Tom so many chances just to be accountable. If Tom just said, if, instead of blaming their long relationship, not having sex, blaming all these outside factors, if he just said, oh, man, I'm so sorry. I really did mess up. I'm trying to be better and then shut up. Mm -hmm. I think everyone would forgive Tom. We'd all move on. But it's his insistence yeah. that it's other people and it's other things and he's being called out and it's unfair. That's the issue. And I think if if Rachel's listening, she totally should come on because that's all anyone wants to hear is that she's sorry. Yeah, that's really it. And then I think people and, will have, move and on. hear her articulate an understanding and, a, and some type of growth. I think people went into the season of Vanderpump anticipating forgiving Tom Sandoval. You know, I still think he's a piece of shit. But like most Vanderpump fans like Jax Taylor eh, it was in the past or whatever. <laughs> like people are quick to forgive these reality TV stars. Like, it's no fun hating on the same person forever. So I think most people went in anticipating a redemption of Tom Sandoval, and it just has failed miserably because he just clearly seems so resistant to demonstrating that growth. But I do think people were willing and wanting to give him that opportunity. It just hasn't landed. I mean, he's done everything wrong. I mean, the 23-year-old publicist who's just <sighs> Riley. goading... Crisis. I mean, where's Riley in all this? I mean, what happened to Riley? R Riley needs a publicist. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, he's just, you know what I thought about was, um, if you guys remember the comedian Louis C.K. Yeah. 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 So I used to work at Comedy Central. I'm a huge comedy nerd. Louis C.K. was my favorite comedian of all time. Same. And, right? Mm -hmm. And then he has these charges or accusations about sexual misconduct. If he had just said, I'm so sorry, I, I really did mess up. 
I'm going to go learn my lesson. I'm going to come back. I would have been his number one fan again. But what he did was he sent out like, oh, well, it's actually this other thing. I'm sorry, but blah, 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 blah. It's when you blame other people for why you made a mistake. Nobody no, buys no that. Cares. Nobody just, wants to hear it. No it's the I'm sorry, but that's no. never going to get you anywhere. It's like, yeah. don't even just, say anything. Then, just I'm sorry, period. Exactly. And Tom, just someone needs to say, stop talking. Stop say I'm interviews. sorry. <laughs> Stop, stop talking. Just Riley, stop. if you're listening, just um, <laughs> stop. What do we make of Sheena, the, the Sheena and Lala conversation, uh, and even in the after show, well, like the whole like Sheena trying to get back with Tom and Lala, like Lala is like on the fence between trying to criticize Ariana, like the living situation. Uh, what do we, what do we make of that? Yeah, I mean, basically, Lala was like basically saying to to James in the after show. I don't know if you guys watched it, but it was like she was basically saying like Ariana doesn't get to live with Tom and then tell people you don't get to hang out with this person. I feel like those things aren't the same. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it's easy for her to say that because getting out of her relationship, she didn't own the house. She can just pick up and 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 move. And obviously, she's dealing with other legal stuff. But I'm also like. Yes. Is Ariana staying in the house and not selling? Like, is that petty? Absolutely. But at the same time, I'm like, it's not like she's sitting here having kumbaya circles with Tom in the living room. I and agree. then is like, yeah. you guys can't hang out with him, but I can. Like, yeah, she's not hanging out with him. That's not what's happening. And I here. also don't think that Ariana, like we're, we're talking about enforcing a boundary. That's all this is. Mm -hmm. And Ariana seems to be willing to do that. And she is saying, I don't want him in my life, both directly and indirectly. And if you are someone who does, no offense, then no longer, I can no longer have you in my life because this is a boundary I'm going to enforce and I'm going to take no prisoners and it's not personal, but this is for my own mental health. I got nothing wrong with that. And just because you don't like a boundary someone's willing to set and how far they're willing to go to enforce it, she's not saying don't be friends with them. She's saying if you're going to be friends with them, then I can't be friends with you. And that's called being an adult. Yeah, but Lala did the same thing. And that's why it's funny because she says it. She's like, I would in the after show, she was like, I wouldn't tell you to not hang out with uh, Randall. And I was like, you literally had an entire episode going after Schwartz for hanging out with Randall. And if you did say don't hang out with Randall, you're not wrong. You would for be that. entitled to do that. A thousand percent. It's your ex-husband who you introduced to all of these people who is now, you know, it's it's a gross legal battle between you guys. I completely and there's lawyers involved. So it's like it definitely makes sense. But there's also, I think, lawyers involved going on between Ariana and Tom. So I'm like, at the end of the day, you can make a stance, but like you don't get to sit there and be like, well, mine was different because it's like, no, no, no. You did the exact same thing. The yeah. exact same thing. Which, by the way, is understandable. A thousand percent. You know, I wouldn't want if I was leaving a relationship and it ended as poorly as, you know, Tom and Ariana's did. I wouldn't want my best friends hanging out with him. I wouldn't want that energy. I wouldn't want to know. And you're totally right. It's Ariana's right to be. Um, to set boundaries, I think staying in the house is deeply weird. Yeah, I, like I it's mean, a weird, it's a weird move, petty choice. But she's allowed to make it. That yeah. that is her choice to make. And you know, one thing I was remembering back to: Do you remember the season where the storyline was all about Ariana's mental health and how depressed she was? Yep. That's that is rubbing me the wrong way in this current edit, which is, oh, I don't believe Tom is depressed. That's not great. That it was a whole season of her depression and buying into it. I, I don't want Bravo to touch mental health anymore. Yeah, it's too serious. No, not I to have do a big it. issue when they do that shit. And then there are fake therapy sessions, mm -hmm. and like they're they're pretending they care about mental health all while exposing mental health. I couldn't agree more with you. Just stop fucking touching it. Stop having fake therapy sessions. A real therapist can't come on a TV show and conduct a therapy session. So stop fucking doing it. They're, they're literally using therapy as scenes to like, you know, they call them like, uh, what are they, they, they have different names for them, but they're like- um, Confessional? Well, saying? not the confessionals, but like there are certain scenes like on The Bachelor, for example, when, they, when you have all the girls sitting on a couch, they, they call them girl chants and man chants in Bachelor World. What they really are is like forwarding the scene to the, you know, it's, it's, it's narrating- to the audience, what were, you know, mm -hmm. bringing people up to speed who maybe didn't watch last episode and kind of leading us into what's going to happen next for the, that. That's the point of the scene. Mm -hmm. it, like it serves its purpose. So these, these therapy sessions that Bravo has on the variety of the shows, that's why they're doing it. It's well, Jax will come in or Tom to be like, oh, so this happened and this happened, blah, blah, blah. 
they're 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 catching you up to speed mm -hmm. and they're mocking therapy while doing it. It's and it's highly just dangerous like, for anyone dealing with mental health yeah. or suicidal thoughts. I just don't think Bravo's equipped to handle these topics. It's just it's so dangerous for people actually experiencing these. Yeah, things. and if they're you know if it's really going on, I don't think I don't think Tom should be filming. No, he no. Should be in, he if, needs... if that's what if that if it's that concerning. I mean, like stepping back, it, what we're talking about is a threat to someone's life. Yeah. yeah, you know that is the most serious thing possible. It would be so reckless, so irresponsible of Bravo. I mean, actually, I'll just say it is reckless and it is irresponsible to be making therapy and mental health entertainment because guess what it's also like a bad from my tv background it's a bad tv look because we the audience are so confused mm -hmm. like i'm not enjoying a conversation about tom sandoval um and and possibly suicide i'm not enjoying any of that and it feels weird and inauthentic so i also bump on it yeah. so it's like not good entertainment it's a really bad message and a bad look i I really wonder why. Do you have any insight on like why they would be going in this direction? I think Bravo has trapped themselves in a spot where every last season for like Beverly Hills and for Vanderpump Rules has been so volatile and toxic with like people fleeing the FBI, like legal court cases happening, people cheating, like couples breaking up. I think they've trapped themselves in this point where they're like, we need to rebrand or not rebrand, but like take a different angle with our talent. And they've taken this like therapy angle, which is like a way of them cleaning up all of these like loose ends of like really toxic situations. That it seems more meaningful and like yeah. Bravo's in touch. And I love Bravo. This is my favorite. Yeah, so we love Bravo too. And like, yeah. And I think to that point, I think you're seeing a lot of character. I mean, Vanderpump has become a show of who's matured and who hasn't, mm -hmm. you know? And through maturity, a lot of people have jumped into therapy. And like, that's great that we're talking about it and bringing awareness to it and normalizing it. But yes, there's a difference between normalizing it and then using it as part of your content and 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 mocking it, yeah. Essentially, yeah. Agreed. I mean, especially with like Beverly Hills, it's like almost every single episode has two therapy sessions. Yeah. So it's like it's an oversaturation at this point. I think speaking of boundaries and you know all that kind of stuff, we could talk about Kyle and Dorit's oh, yeah. text exchange, the Bev Hills housewife uh, finale. Mm -hmm. the, fin the the episode itself was it was better than the rest. Like, there's more that happened. I mean. They finally talked about splitting up with Kyle and Mauricio, which, in my opinion, that's been been said. Like we've all known about this. It, yeah. They've I, been. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah has thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I, my issue that I had with this episode was that we spent an entire season avoiding conversations about marriage, and like she, she's not. She didn't have to give us anything, okay? And I agree with that that take. But at the same time, if you're going to spend an entire season knowing that that is the hot topic that everybody's waiting for, and then you give us 20 minutes of an episode, and then the next 30 minutes is you breaking the news to your family, like, it felt kind of gross to me. Like, it felt a little raw. I was like, this is, I think this is a moment for your family to discuss this, not so much like bringing all of America in and being like, oh, well, watch my kids cry and the sympathy yeah. while where I'm like, you guys have this conversation. Then maybe uh, Mauricio and Kyle sit down on a couch and have a conversation with the camera. They're, but... they're also we, we're, we're seeing it as a as a preview to Mauricio's Beverly Hills like real estate show Wild. on Netflix. Yeah. So like it's like if you didn't see the Netflix watermark, you would have thought this was another episode of Housewives. A show about real estate. Yeah. And, and also Kyle Richards never appeared in the other show. So right. she appears now in the other show. Oh, in this next season? She's, she's teased in? in like clips with selling <laughs> Beverly Hills or whatever it's called. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's it seems like they're leveraging their relationship for, you know, clicks. Views. views. Yeah, I felt really yeah. bad for her daughter because you could tell that she didn't want to cry on camera. Uh -huh. And then, you know, when you're about to cry and then somebody really close to you, like your mom, will be like, what's wrong? Yeah. And you just can't control it. That lump in your throat just gives in and you lose it. You could tell that that's what happened with her daughter. And I just felt so bad for her because she like hid into Kyle and she just didn't want to be on camera. You know, another scene this episode that made like the involvement of kids seem kind of awkward was with um, Sutton. And it oh, was yeah, like a harmless daughter. conversation. It was her and her daughter. But you could tell her daughter was like, With I don't want to be here. Yeah. The diamond. And, and she was just like, yes, mom, sure. What? It, very, it, was a, it was a nothing conversation. It was fine. It was pleasant. It, but it was like you realize that she's doing a scene with her daughter. Mm -hmm. Because it, they are. That, that's the show. They're, they, these women get together and they do these scenes that are not scripted, but, you know, they're structure. 
around, okay, you guys are going to talk about this and let's see where it goes. I thought it was kind of empowering, though, that Sutton was saying, like, I'm a wealthy woman, but I want my kids to see me more than just the, that. The intent of the conversation, I'm not criticizing, like, the topic or what it was or whether it even landed, but just knowing how these shows are made and just having the awareness of that she had to do a scene with her daughter and her daughter was just like, yeah, yeah, her mom, her, 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 yeah, mom, sure. I it think, was just kind of awkward. You I know? think like, she's just like an awkward child. Because that being said, like, Sutton, but is she though, or is she someone who doesn't have the experience? She's that, appeared on the show before, and she, I mean, makes commentary, but she doesn't say much. My take is that she's in college, so I think it's more of like, like, stay clean kind of vibe when you're on TV. But then that being said, Sutton posted a picture of her daughter in the diamonds. It was like, this is what I love to see. So I thought it was empowering that she brought her daughter to like this expensive jewelry experience and was like you put them on like you feel yeah. what this feels like it's just weird to see you know it's not like when when garcelle's at the beach with her son yeah it's not as if they went to the beach had a day and all of a sudden like some sort of drone showed up and said oh my god you guys are talking about your relationship let's get this on camera you know what i'm saying like that's not how it goes down you yeah. know they have to make a show it just becomes a little more on the nose when the kids are involved realizing that these kids are doing scenes with their parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, particularly the divorce. I, if mm -hmm. you, I don't know if your parents have been divorced, mm -hmm. but that conversation where my parents told me they were getting divorced was one of the absolute worst moments of my entire life. I was 12 and I can still remember it like it was yesterday. That's like a lifetime moment. That's like beyond a TV show. That changes the trajectory of everything. So, to capture it on TV, like, I don't even, I don't want to see that. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be a part of that moment. Well, and also to, like, kind of deny it so hard. Like, remember the dinner, the the infamous Denise Richards the wee, wee dinner. dinner? Yeah, like, where it's like, she goes so hard on Garcelle and um, Sutton for even bringing it up or speculating about a ring. And oh, it means my husband's cheating. Nobody said that. Nobody said that. But we're just asking the change in your life choices are it's, it's very drastic and and is there something behind that and she like denies 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 and almost attacks the other women being like i can't believe you would bring this up and and you're embarrassing me you should have done this off camera whatever and then as i said to to put such a personal moment that doesn't just affect you and mauricio this affects your children's lives and now it's forever captured on film like that's something where i'm like i wouldn't want to be cruising through the uh through channels or something and all of a sudden oh there's me being told that my parents are that's getting a tough. divorce yeah you it know is, when you really think of it that way it's like it's a choice it's a choice yeah. speaking of a choice the a lot of the conversation going on this weekend was the text revelation uh between kyle and dorit where uh dorit released text messages mm -hmm. from kyle alleging that Kyle reached out to Dorit right before the filming of the reunion, uh, which Dorit apparently released, kind of suggesting that Kyle was being manipulative, trying to kind of control her narrative going into the reunion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think the big question is, is around like, you know, is that shady? Is it not? I mean, releasing private text is a choice. I think there's a time and a place for it. It's not one that I personally in my life respect. But at the same time, if we're talking about reality television, like it's messy. It's messy. Yeah. And I think Dorit and Kyle's friendship has had a lot of hardships in the last year and a half, the last two seasons that I'm like, uh, the, I, if anything, this is like kind of laying into what the next season is probably going to be is going to be Dorit versus Kyle, because I'm like, that is a fallout. And if you do that to me, you you exploit my messages. I, we're not friends. So the only time where I feel like it's appropriate is in a, a a public setting where one public figure is putting out a false narrative mm -hmm. about another public figure. And if that public figure has receipts, then I, you know, and again, with except, I don't even, even then, I don't think, I think the devil's in the details. Mm -hmm. uh, then I think it's worth a conversation. We, we've done it. I, I've done it, you know. When a narrative about, uh, well, actually, it was more Natalie, but we, we've done it. When okay. there was a narrative about uh, this show or me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that's bullshit. You know, here's what really went down. Yeah. That being said, you're always going to get criticism. Mm -hmm. And we got criticism because it is a choice. It is a violation of what is assumed to be between two people that you're putting out publicly. Right. And I think you, it, it is always deserving of some kind of criticism. And if you do do it, you're definitely drawing a line in the sand. You're you're kind of you're saying, yeah, we're 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 not cool, 
And uh, I think if you do it, you have to expect the other person to want to cut you out of any type of circle of trust or any type of communication. Because like, why would you ever reach out to someone again and share them anything knowing that they might just go ahead and, and make that public information? Mm-hmm. Well, and this is like a common format with reunions and like housewives in general, where the morning of the reunion or days leading up to the reunion, there'll be text messages to try to silence them. Right. So that's where Dor- Dorit was like, I am being manipulated because this was before they filmed the reunion. This happens, but to your point, this happens with friends. This happens, I'm sure, on every Bachelor tell-all or Love is Blind reunion. There's always going to be like, hey, man, like, just checking in, making sure we're cool, <laughs> blah, blah, you know, like, that, that's kind of normal. What? F- by the way, can we read, can we do a little bit of a dramatic reading of the text messages? Yeah. Who wants to, to Tara and Sh- Sierra, maybe? Right. Yeah, it's in the Beverly Hills section. I have them as well. Kyle, Texas, Dorit. Hi. I've been trying to reach out because I know we are in a weird place and it really bothers me. And it's not even on the show. I wanted to explain where I'm at and why I have been distanced, but my hands were tied. Of course, some interview comments hurt my feelings and created more issues for me, but I'm used to that and could get past it in time. I also reminded myself that you didn't know what I was going through with Mo at the time for most of the remarks. But then I heard some things that you said about me off camera that hurt me deeply, and I wasn't even even able to say what I heard or from whom. It was one of those things where I wish I just didn't know it all because I wasn't able to share and yet I was left hurt and couldn't. And it goes on. And I couldn't even try to work through it with you. And I know you will be frustrated and want to know what and who said it, but I can't. It's as frustrating to me as it will be to you. Trust me. I have gone through such a hard time, Dorit. I've been in so much pain and I can't tell you. Never have I felt so low. And I know you are also going through a hard time. Normally, I would have reached out to check on you, but I was hurt and very depressed. I've spent 30 years with Mo, married 28, and I have no idea how to live without him or how to navigate through life on my own because I have so much on my plate for tomorrow, and I know you do too. I love you, PK, and your kids so much. I've been thinking about you a lot and hoping you aren't struggling too much. I don't want to lose someone in my life over a TV show. They don't even know we're going through a hard time, so I don't see the need to bring it up here. I should have said something sooner, but I honestly haven't been strong enough. But relationships and you are more important to me than the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and I don't feel like, quote unquote, bringing it up for our expense, especially when we have enough battles to handle as it is. Anyway. I would like to sit down and talk after we get through tomorrow. Maybe have lunch or dinner when you can. If you want to talk before tomorrow, I am around. I would give anything not to go and have to do this. I don't know how much longer I can do this show. It's so toxic and creates so much anxiety for me. Anyway, let me know if you want to talk. You have thoughts, Sierra. (laughs) (laughs) To me, I'm thinking like, okay, that's... I'm Pretty just, normal message to send a friend. I don't know. And and maybe this is like years and years of watching Housewives, but it's just like, it's funny to me that Kyle comes after Lisa Vanderpump on a regular about controlling a narrative and being Bobby Fisher playing chess, not checkers. And it's like, you're doing exactly that because if this was genuine, this would you've had plenty of downtime to reach out to Dorit, but you're reaching out to her the day before the reunion in hopes of silencing her based off of what you two are going through. And I'm like, I don't even think that that's a, a big point of contention on the show right now. Yeah. What if Kyle added, maybe even at the reunion or on her Instagram or somewhere and said, after further reflection, now going through what I'm going through now, I have more empathy for Lisa Vanderpump. I regret some of my comments towards her and the accusations about controlling. Of course, Kyle is like, of course, Kyle's trying to control the narrative. Mm-hmm. But she is a human being talking about a 30 year relationship and a divorce. And yes, I know they signed up for housewives, but like. But she's not talking about Mo. She's saying, you don't know what Mo and I have been through, but I just don't need one more thing being brought up on this stage. Yeah, she is. She is definitely trying to, sure, control her narrative. And she is trying to make sure the things that she's not comfortable being discourse. That's obviously what's going on. But I, on a human level. I get where she's coming from. Maybe she's being a hypocrite. 
but like, why do you think? And, and and so that that I guess it leads me to wonder where I'm like, with the end of the show being about the disintegration of her marriage, I'm like, why would what's going on between you and Dorit that you felt like you needed to put a pause on? Because I don't think any of us were questioning the relationship yeah. there. So there's clearly something that's either gone on or has happened that she's trying well, maybe, to hush. maybe maybe so. Maybe there this are is... elements of this friendship that isn't part of the TV show that we don't know. And maybe there was elements of this very long text that had to do with controlling the narrative about the reunion they're about to film. But also maybe it was friend to friend, let's get dinner and drinks. And like, I miss you, friend. And I know this show has come between us a little bit, but you know, maybe it wasn't just about the show and just about controlling the narrative. I mean, like when I was on The Bachelorette, I you know, got my heart broken a couple of times. I had thoughts and feelings about how I was treated, how I was handled by the person who was the lead. And then I became The Bachelor. And instantly I was like, oh, you know, I guess I have a little bit more empathy mm -hmm. for the situation that they were put in and how they handled things. Now, I, I tried to handle things differently based off how I was treated, but you, no one's perfect. Mm -hmm. And But I definitely, once I lived that experience that they lived earlier to me, I was a lot more understanding of how they treated me. You know, and I had a lot more empathy and I have since said that, but like maybe Kyle's just missing well, for all the people who are calling her out for being a hypocrite. Uh, maybe she just needs to add that well, to the commentary. Well, Kyle LVP the yeah. last episode. I'm also, I'm with Sierra on this. I think that it is manipulative that she chose to send this to Dorit because it almost seemed like all these topics that she's talking about were brought up by Sutton and Garcelle and possibly Erica, if you want to argue that, but Dorit was just there. Uh -huh. And then like this whole season as it was airing, Kyle was calling Dorit out saying her confessionals were misleading of their relationship as a friendship. Mm -hmm. Like saying that she overplayed their friendship. So for her to send this to Dorit the night before, I think it's manipulative. But I don't think it's manipulative. If it was manipulative, she would have like spun a different way to talk about it. But she's just asking. She's just like, hey, can you not talk about this? And then Dorit's an adult and she can choose. Uh, actually, no, I am going to talk about it. She can choose what to do whatever she wants. I do think it's very hypocritical, though. Mm -hmm. I think for sure it's that, but I don't see anything sinister. I, I just don't yeah. get the sinister vibe. And it's definitely a choice for Dorit to release these text messages. Yeah, yeah, sure. it is not, is... She is not, Kyle didn't like come after Dorit. She's not spewing some sort of false narrative about Dorit. Dorit is not clearing her name with these text messages. She's just like, hey, let's just make this part of the reunion. Like, yeah. Dorit is being a great employee. Dorit, to me, it's more manipulative that Dorit's releasing the text messages because to me, it's like, I think there's been speculation about D D Dorit's time on this show mm -hmm. and whether maybe she's going to be wanted around mm -hmm. for next season. And to me, this is a play by Dorit to ensure that they bring her back for next season. Relevancy. For for drama between her and Kyle. I mean, interesting context as well along like the LVP line is that Kathy Hilton did try to silence Lisa Renna last season. Mm -hmm. And like Kyle didn't defend Kathy at the reunion. And that was where she was like, like Kathy was like, if you're not going to defend me, like we're not sisters. They, so for then Kyle to then do the same thing that Kathy did that she didn't defend her for is very like. There's like a history of it. And it's just like, I don't think it's so much as like sinister or, you know, coming from a dark place. I think it's more so Kyle covering her ass yeah. where it's just like and by all means of course it, you you have that choice but exactly what you said Dorit has a choice to respond and Dorit doesn't have the strongest storyline so mm -hmm. I'm like if anything you just gave her ammo the day before the reunion where I'm like yeah. we don't even know if Dorit was going to bring any of this stuff up I think it was dumb yeah, that's she, the word I would use a thousand go. percent yeah. the whole situation because she could have done this two weeks prior and and Dorit wouldn't have thought twice about or it or not done it at all it's if you don't want something talked about you don't go out of your way to say don't talk about this one topic right. don't bring attention to don't it don't bring attention to it what do we think of Dorit's uh, reunion outfit because oh to gosh. me that was a stronger choice <laughs> yeah, I was than releasing say, text messages that was a choice that was a yeah and you see and, in the previews that they're all waiting on her too <laughs> so so and into sewing her, yeah. I don't yeah. feel like I'm in a position to create someone's style because who am I? From someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, it seems like people who do know what they're talking about might have an opinion about it. Sierra had a good point. It was giving Real Housewives of Dubai. It's just, it was very themed, themey, and it doesn't go with anywhere that they went. Mary this Magdalene, season. you know. It doesn't. Know, like, is it Easter? Like, are we, are we doing runway like runway uh... version? Like, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't understand the choice at all. I liked it though. I like the style. I just you liked wish it. She seemed very like calm and like elegant. I don't know. <laughs> I do not like it. Mother Teresa and Mother Red. Teresa, yeah. I just. <sighs> It just, to me, it goes with uh, Dorit, you know, self-identifying herself as some sort of fashion 
like icon and she just buys expensive shit. It, she's so loud about it. That's the thing that really rubs mm-hmm. me the wrong way is that I'm like, we don't need to know. We do know now that you're in Chanel head to toe because it literally says it from head to toe. And I'm like, I don't know. What's the the, the saying about like wealth where it's like like wealth whispers? Yeah. Rich. I don't know. There's something about like rich is loud and, 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 and wealth whispers. And I'm like, there's something that's just very like you really need us to know how wealthy you are. But it's like we know you're on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And again, PK. He just like manages Boy George. Where is this money coming from? <laughs> this is the greatest mystery of all. <laughs> how are they so rich? How? 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 Like, where's the money coming from? I don't from? know. He's just like hiding out in England, hiding from his wife. 28 days. Like he was in 38 days in London doing some sort of deal. I mean, some, this is a little problematic, but some housewives have said that some robberies could have been strategic for write-offs. Mm-hmm. That is a possible like explanation. But that yeah, it's been a storyline forever. There are people who flaunt their money and you makes you wonder where they get their money. Well, yeah, to Sierra's point, you know, people who have a lot of money are usually a little bit more discreet yeah, yeah. about it. You yeah. don't have to wear head to toe Chanel to convince people that you're rich. If you're or really that you're wealthy. Stylish. Yeah, and that the style thing with me and Dorit, it's always been like that. She's mm-hmm. always been mm-hmm. so brand conscious, but without the brand, they're not that cool. <laughs> you know, I'm like, sorry, sure. but if you took away that that's Chanel, that's it's like, a costume. It's if ugly. you take yeah. away the label, it's a costume. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you have like Kathy Hilton, who's in like slippers and then like something she found at the gas station. Like she's just wearing whatever. It's well, like uh, Crystal and Dorit on the plane. Yes. Uh, when she, Crystal's like, my outfit's like nine, $9 from TJ Maxx and you've got Dorit in like head to toe Chanel pajamas. And it's like uh, Crystal's married to one of the most successful like Disney animator. Like they, they have real wealth. Yeah. Her family and is so got, wealthy. And, and, and she's and she's running her own companies that seem to be highly successful. Coconut like, water, like Yeah, we can check a few boxers and we can assume safely where their money's coming from. A thousand percent. Uh and Dorit, it's just like boy George must be like doing some sort of side business. The He's swimsuit line? Remember the swimsuit beach? I was bunny? gonna bring was gonna that say. up. I was gonna say, is that where the money's coming it's from? No more. I mean, oh, really? they had like a flash sale like a year or two ago because it was like everything shutting down. So I'm like, she doesn't have a clothing line. Mm. Uh, PK is like in and out of debt. And I don't know what he actually does for a living. And I don't know what she actually does for a living. I think she did bridal as well. And I don't she did. Yeah, I don't know if that's even still a thing. But I know the swimsuit line is no more. Hmm. I wonder if she's the breadwinner. Because she's on the show. Like, I wonder if that's, like, a main pull, which I, I wouldn't think is a lot. I was going to say, not enough yeah. for, I mean, her outfit alone, like, that's an episode. Not tr- <laughs> with Maybe everything two. with Dorit, I don't, you know, I love the show. They're all humans. But everything with Dorit, it gives desperation. It's like, look at me. Look, I'm rich. This, even this text message, like, I want to stay relevant. Like, I've mm-hmm. never felt that Dorit was authentically there or doing anything other than trying to self-promote, which I know is a big part of all of this. But do you think Dorit comes off as like a genuine, authentic person? No, I mean, and that's the, I, when I started watching it, I was like, I really like Dorit. She seems nice and pleasant and like, you know. But yeah, the, she's not even good at like, I mean, I say that Anne-Marie too, like they're not even good at talking shit. <laughs> you know, it's like you we thought about this line for three days. Yeah. And now you're, de- you know, you're not in the, you're not in the moment. You're just, you're not even good at being petty. Yeah. Well, and Dorit was brought on the show to be like a good friend. Like she's always been a good friend of Kyle. She's always been the person that kind of has like a level head of advice to input during like fights. And that's where now that this is the drama, her friendship. Yeah. She has nothing else to say. It's, it's, it's gone flat for me. Yeah. Yeah. It also wasn't the best season. I'm not going to lie. That's like true. there was a whole lot of nothing that happened yeah, this was... season. Do we need Kathy Hilton boring. back? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, she makes an appearance she at does. the reunion, and are some speculating that maybe this is the start of her coming back? I'm hoping. I hope so. Hunky dory. Hunky dory. You know. Oh, we, we got to get rid of Anne Marie for sure. Absolutely. I think she I mean, is coming back. I think she's unfortunately coming back because she was at Why? The, she was at the People Choice Awards with the uh, cast, mm-hmm. so I feel like she wouldn't have made that appearance if she didn't have like a pickup. But like you know, all that stuff going on with her husband, and that's she, true. She's just not a good housewife. Hopefully, they'll just have her le- on less, featured less. 
They already uh, kind of didn't I, feature her. I know. She was like a friend of with the Which full-time was status. Wild. I thought she yeah. was a friend of no. until Justin was like, no, she's She's got a diamond. Yeah, no, like, she's what? in the opening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, wow, you're right. I was like, there's people that have been on, on like friends of on the show for multiple years before they got their peach or their, or their diamond or what apple, or their whatever. Flowers. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, this, I, we've never even met this woman. There's, she was introduced yeah. three episodes in. There's people that have also been like, they've demoted like halfway through the season. So she just somehow stayed through who does she know yeah, yeah no. who does she know, <laughs> know. Well, the reunion's coming up and uh, we will find out uh, let's talk a little bit of traders before we get to bachelor uh, don't forget traders is on every thursday night at 9 p.m eastern available on peacock wherever you get peacock also the uh, spoiler alert uh, we, we're talking spoilers up through episode nine nine, nine. nine. this was the, it's really the season of peter weber he's really dominating yeah yeah. I, do you think he goes home? I hope so. I you, hope do, you not. want him to go home? No. I don't. I don't like him. Can we get rid of him? Wow. I'm, no. also, I'm a Phaedra lover, though, so that could be my downfall. Oh, ever, no. Well, we do have uh, Ken, Candy Burris on this week of Going Deeper. And ever since talking to Candy, I, I like can't Phaedra stand less. Phaedra. I like mm-hmm. Phaedra less. She mm-hmm. seems truly. That is true. Well, like, even Kate, when she was recruited as a trader, was like, what have you been doing? What's your plan? I don't understand. Like, how I do things get one. so bad? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It ends in the cliffhanger with them, you know, either going to get rid of Phaedra to the 4-4 four, four vote. The round table. The round table. I think that they're going to get rid of Peter. And I think that it's it's well, just, I mean, you guys are respect, all idiots. I don't, exactly. I've lost all respect for the people who vote for uh, Me too. For, for for Peter. Who is the other housewife of uh, the fashion line? Cherie. Spring, summer, Cherie. Yeah. Cherie. <laughs> Cherie. I mean, like to her credit, she's still on the show and she's not going anywhere because people just keep forgetting she's on the show. Yeah. yeah. But her vote was 100% simply vote like supporting her housewife. Yeah. Yep. It had nothing to do with anything else. And at this point in the game, you're not playing the game. You're just like, you're just afraid to actually give a thought. Peter has outlined all the obvious reasons why he's not a traitor and like the whole trap and, and it's just like it's almost like they know that peter's not a traitor their favorite so point is more we need to just get rid of him because he's a traitor to the faithfuls he's not a traitor but he's a traitor to the faithfuls and they're all just like yeah you're right he is annoying he is like he, last week he did try to get rid of somebody who it's just like yeah what? and we talked to peter <laughs> You know, and he acknowledged that maybe he kind of overplayed his hand and was a little too aggressive in his gameplay. But yeah, if they send Peter home. And it's down to MJ, who's definitely going to send Peter home. And, and well, MJ and Sandra, these are the game players. They are the ones who like respect the, the, Sandra the, game, won Survivor. the gamesmanship. So for her to act like, I mean, just say it. Just say, you know what? You're my biggest competition. I want you out. Like, but don't sit there and pretend that you don't know that Phaedra is a traitor. I lost respect for your decision making. Yeah. And even CT was uh, almost voted CD, out. CT he, came around. He came around, thankfully. But yeah. I was almost like, what? You were on the challenge. You were on Survivor. What are you people doing? You know, you you can you suss know. out liars. Even yeah. the previous episode, um, when somebody was calling out that like Phaedra's never reactive the next morning after. And I'm like, that's a huge tell that like I would be sitting there watching either waiting for her to yeah. come in or being like, she's over here like, mm, let me get some of that. Where's the butter? Let me, yeah. yeah, you know, and I'd be like, that's weird because you could have died last night and you just don't care. She doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that would be the hugest tell ever. And then uh, who got killed last week with the eye where I'm just like, Kevin? these are. Kevin, yeah, where I'm like, these are things that people that are getting eliminated are literally handing to you. I mean, the biggest one is just the fact that Dan brought up Phaedra before he left. Why would he have done yeah, that? It's so obvious. It doesn't make any sense. He obviously was trying to throw another traitor under the bus so that if they had voted her out, they would have been like, oh, yeah, you were right. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm holding on to hope that MJ doing? is going to make the right decision. I, I are same, you, but I don't think she Are you rooting for you. the traitors or the faithfuls? Because I'm rooting for the traitors, Loki. Oh, I'm rooting oh. for the faithful. I want, like, I want the Hot traitors to win. I love that. Well, but, but the traitors are Phaedra and Kate. And, and Kate, Kate yeah. now. But and I don't like care. Kate, you know, she's she's good TV, but I'm not rooting for her. Well, I love Kate from uh, Below Deck. So yeah. I am. I like, I'm like, I'm interested to see because obviously Phaedra, if Phaedra's not chosen this week, then she's gone next week. So I'm like, I'm curious as to see what the next move is going to be with recruiting a trader. And it's like, how many, how many people are left? Right. How many more times do they get the opportunity to recruit someone until it ends? Until it ends. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. So, so that's where I'm also like, are we going to get down to it, and it's only going to be like one traitor versus four people? We'll or... find out. It's my first. It's my first season watching it, but See. it is is really hard. I I've I've been anti Phaedra ever since talking to Candy. Well, what did you think of Phaedra's comment when I think she said, "Peter, I don't need to kiss your or Rose." It was a great fed line that she delivered wonderfully on. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. You don't think she came up with that? Oh, maybe. She's a lawyer, so I'm like, she's really she good with her up. words that, and that arguments. Was, that, was, that was Phaedra, was the professional TV maker. <laughs> like, yeah. She's good TV. Like, she's an excellent TV maker. Uh, and that was her making some great TV. But she's got to go, in my book. Yeah, I agree with you. Ever since the Candy interview, which you like, will yuck. all see. On Thursday. Yeah, I just, a just little... I can't wait. We'll see. All right, let's wrap it up with Bachelor. Uh, we are in the week before hometowns. Uh, Joey is down to six ladies. Um, to me, this is like the, the big thing to talk about is like for the first time, I think we're starting to get to know Joey a little more. more. I, and I only, indirectly, because last week I posed the question, what do we really know about Joey? Nothing. He plays tennis. Mm -hmm. Tennis. We know a lot. He's he got loves tennis. <laughs> Good hair. I also, he, I, he, he didn't seem to get a haircut. He's tightened up the sides. He heard you. He heard, <laughs> I don't know if he heard me or what. He I mean, I'm self-conscious, but uh, the Oompa Loompa haircut seems to be gone. <laughs> um, and he's even that much more good looking. He's um, so good looking. He's so handsome. Yeah. We wow. got to give him that for sure. But it's just funny because like most of Bachelor Nation is, I, I think they've just been starved for a pretty bachelor because this man can truly do no wrong right now. Everyone nope. is just so excited. That he's hot. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and he's likable. And he's yeah. likable. And, and he's like often teary eyed and emotional. Mm -hmm. Which oh. makes his eyes just that more Glisten. beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. I hate to be, you know, I, I mean, doing me, but like this, I will say this, this episode, think about it. Uh, uh, so now you're getting to the point of the season where you're down to people who he's gotten some real connections with. And we're hearing this whole time where Joey's just like, I'm afraid this no one's going to get rejected. I'm afraid. It's like, what are you, you know, what are people not rejecting him for? And this season, like most seasons, but even so much more this season has really been the season of trauma dumping. And, you know, every lady who talks to Joey telling this sad story and Joey's is receiving a lot of credit uh, via the audience of being the good listener Thank you for sharing. Good eye contact. Very empathetic. Very considerate. You know, acknowledging that you know their valid feelings. But keep in mind, he is talking to most of these women. He doesn't know who they are. He has no emotional connection with, and he's not invested in them. He doesn't like them. So Joey has the self awareness to be like, just listen, just say these words, just be nice, you know. But now, now we're down to. Now things are at stake for Joey, mm -hmm. you know, and and now it's it's really interesting to see Daisy and Maria you can always you can always especially at this point in the season really see where the contestants separate themselves because a lot of it's still the like I feel like I'm about to go home just so you know I'm falling in love with you and then oh you got to go but now you know people who are confident in their position where they're like well I don't know how I feel about you mm -hmm. you know and you got Daisy and Maria both saying that. I thought it was really interesting the conversation that Joey had with Maria. I was a bit confused because for the first time, you really saw Joey kind of get irritated. Yeah. You know, and kind of frustrated. And we saw a couple of seasons ago with Clayton. Clayton was like peak how we can go wrong for The Bachelor, right? Yeah. In the sense that, yes, this is your love story. This is about you finding love. And that's true. There is no one here on the show that is expected to get engaged other than Joey. That is a ton of pressure. It is hard. It is difficult. It is scary. So I, as a former bachelor, I empathize with, with Joey. I even empathize with Clayton. But we saw how Clayton executed so poorly that, it, you know, he came across as selfish, uh, inconsiderate to these women's feelings. All his actions were about, this is my love story. I need, it's about me finding love. And we saw how that all went bad with Clayton. And I don't su suspect the same thing to happen with Joey. I think he's far more in touch and a little bit more self-aware uh, than Joey. But we did get to see, you know, when he's, Maria's just like, listen, this is hard. I'm developing feelings for you. I'm having a hard time seeing you have this relationship with other women. And this happens every season, right? And there's the whole, like, you know, you signed up for a crowd. And Maria seemed to acknowledge, like, listen, I I'm not, I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. I'm, I, I, she's implying she knows what she signed up for. Mm -hmm. She's just stating 
the obvious and just communicating like I'm, I'm struggling with what I knew I signed up for, but nevertheless still struggling with it. And Joey seems genuinely irritated. And this is where Joey, the bachelor in general, starts entering into dangerous water. And I'll be really curious how Joey handles it going forward because it really lands poorly when the bachelor says things like, well, I just want you to know you could be the one. And then Joey's, you can say Joey's expecting that to, to be good enough for any of the women to hear. You could be the one. I want you to know that. I want you to feel confident about that. And the women are like, what? Well, like, yeah, no, like, uh, I know. I, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Like, I'm Nothing's great. changed. And he's like annoyed that anyone he says that to is not being like, oh, yeah, no, thank you. You know, and you're seeing for the first time a lack of empathy from Joey and a frustration about how the rest of the women are going to conduct themselves going forward because it, it gets messier because now it really is not just Joey's love story. It is Daisy's love story. Mm -hmm. It is Maria's love story. It's uh, Kelsey. Kelsey. Kelsey's Kelsey. love Rachel, story. Jen. Rachel's love story. These women have been kind of going to battle with each other and they've been vulnerable and they, you know, they're, they're poor, you know, they're now they're about to bring their families into the mix. People who didn't sign up for a TV show, you know, that's, that's vulnerable. That's, that's personal. And it'll be really interesting how Joey handles that because I don't know. I saw a guy who got a little annoyed, a little frustrated. I felt like I got to know Joey a little bit more. And I, yeah, I'm sure he's a great guy, but you know, up until this point, it's just been Joey the angel, Joey the listener, Joey the tennis player, Joey can do no wrong. And now I'm seeing a Joey the I could I saw Joey the asshole a little bit. Well, I mean, not, not I the I didn't think he was an asshole, but I, I saw say, I, I saw the crack in the army. I saw a guy who are we talking about a, Maria's blow up? Her blow up, or like her like her whole like emotional state like meltdown. It was a meltdown. Little sure. Yeah, I mean, her yeah, sure, her, her struggling like, with her the the moment. And I, I guess uh, me on the opposite end was that I'm like, it is what you signed up for. But at the same time, I'm like, you're sitting here saying things to him that he can't he can't respond back to. He can't say, I'm going to choose you at the end of this. He can't say, I'm going to leave the show now and, and walk away with you. He can't say, I love you. He can't, he can't say, say I love you. He can't you. reassure you in the way that you're asking him to. So for me, what bothered me with her was her getting up in the middle of it and then going and crying and then yeah. realizing that he wasn't going to come follow her. So then she comes back and mm -hmm. is like, I'm sorry, I just really let that moment get the best of me. And I was like, no, no, you didn't get the reaction you wanted, but you were never intending on leaving. You were well, hoping true. he was going to call totally cameras true. down. You're the one. And, and because you did this, you forced my hand and that's not what happened. And that's why I didn't read it as an asshole move. Yeah. Because my read... I don't, yeah, maybe I should articulate. I don't think it was an asshole move. I'm just saying I saw... We all can be assholes, to be clear. I'm not like, we all have a bad day. We can all handle a situation poorly. We can all like be so fixated on our emotional needs that we don't acknowledge other people's. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And up until this point, Joey's just been like the king of empathy, you know, and understanding. But for the first time this season, we've seen Joey have to have a conversation where, again, my point is, all these other women who are like, here, let me tell you my sad story. That he is hearing something um, important to these women emotionally that has nothing to do with him. So all he has to do is listen and empathize. And now for the first time, we're seeing one of these women, whether we agree with how they've handled it or and, and you make all these incredibly valid points, Sierra. It's just that now Joey is the subject of this emotional problem that one of the women is handling it and we're now seeing Joey handle it in a different way and it's just him getting frustrated that you know Daisy or Maria or Chelsea isn't hearing him mm -hmm. and you hear everything that Joey's saying it's like this is my love story and I'm having a hard time and how, you put yourself in my shoes and you're right he, he he's limited to all those things but or a couple weeks ago it was these feelings are valid I understand what you're doing and we did not hear in that moment from Joey listen I've been in your shoes before. It's totally hard. You, these are valid. I get what you're saying. It's, it's, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get you have every reason to feel this way. He, he's not saying that. He's like, well, sorry, are you leaving? I think you just changed my mind, actually, about the reading of that whole thing. Because I was kind of like, oh, Maria, like, it's kind of reckless to come in with a bunch of emotion, like an emotional meltdown. And you don't have really even a point. I didn't even know what she wanted out of that conversation, frankly. Yeah, it was than, unclear. Yeah. It, she didn't know. I think she was very confused, feeling a lot of emotions. She was the passion, passenger to her emotions, uh, the emotions with the driver. 
But now hearing you say this, it actually, I'm a little bit like, oh, yeah, you know what? Joey didn't say, oh, I, that's valid. I've been in your shoes. He just got kind of annoyed. He just got kind of annoyed. And maybe we didn't get to see something. Maybe we we're missing something. It did seem a bit edited in the sense of like, why is all of a sudden Joey's like, are you, le- I don't, I well, didn't, her getting uh, what are we missing? felt weird too. There, it just felt like there's some piece that we didn't yeah. see. And that's entirely possible. I feel oh. like I understand Joey's position specifically with Maria. I love Maria, but it's like every second she's like kind of doing this power play where she's like, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I may not yeah. like you. Like I'm kind of questioning our love. So it's kind of like Joey keeps saying like you're in the final rounds, but she's using this as a way to be like, but I want you to say yes to me right the second, which is what Sarah was saying. Yeah, and my and my empathy, I think, for uh, Joey in that situation is also that he's made it very clear to all of these women, to us over and over again, his biggest fear is to get to the end of this and the woman not choose him back. Yeah. And so I'm like, with that being said, you dangling this idea of you leaving when you know you're a top contender, it to me, it's like power play versus like where I'm like, you are playing on his emotions. And I can say this from personal experience. You don't care about being a top contender. And that's what I'm saying. Joey is talking to these women as if like, hey, you're top four. Good job. You're top four. No, it's like, are you going to pick me? Am I, are we going to get engaged? Do you love me? Am I your person? Because at this point in the show, the people who are still left, if they are serious about them, and most of them are, I mm-hmm. mean, if you're in it this far, you're, you've been in the bubble. Yeah. You are invested. And you're not thinking about TV. You're not thinking about top four. You're like, holy shit, I can't believe I signed up for the show and I love this person. I can't believe I'm about to introduce my parents. Holy shit, I actually might get engaged. Mm -hmm. And for Joey to use bachelor language, and Joey, when he was talking to Maria, was using bachelor language, just like Clayton did, which is like, hey, listen, like you're one of the top ones. You know, you're a finalist. Good job. You know, if you are thinking you could get engaged to this man in three weeks, you don't give a fuck about being top whatever the fuck. It's right. like, am I am I the person or am, am I not? You are asking me to emotionally go there. You are asking me to like, he said to Chelsea last week, say it with your chest. I'm falling in love with you. Don't hide behind your the camera. Say, say it loud and proud because you know what? You might be my runner up yeah. and good for you. <laughs> you know, Kelsey. I, Kelsey, 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 yeah. Kelsey, Kelsey, fuck, I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelsey you and get Chelsea. what I'm saying? Yes, like he yes, is using yeah. bachelor language as if these women should be grateful for being finalists. Mm-hmm. And when it, and it also says to me, Joey never had a connection with charity because Joey is having a harder time empathizing with where these women are because I don't think Joey ever thought for a second he was going to end up with charity. Okay. I don't think he ever had his heart broken. And that's, and that's no criticism. I mean, there's been plenty of people who have been finalists who are just like, I know you're not going to pick me. But I, I can say this as someone who has been heartbroken on that show, whether it was delusion or reality, like you have a lot more empathy for how you bring your finalists along. And the way Joey talked to Maria is a, is a guy who didn't have his heart broken on the show and is kind of expecting these women to be grateful for being finalists. Well, what did you think about him pulling her aside before giving out all the roses in the middle of the rose ceremony? I don't know. TV. You know, I, you know why, why are we canceling a cocktail party if you do have conversations? You know, when you, right, you, Rachel kind of said that. You, can, like, you cancel thought... cocktail parties mm-hmm. for drama. You know, it's it's always like, oh, we have some. I have. It's always one or two people. It's like, I, I really need this. Con- I really need this time with the, mm-hmm. there was joy. And then it gets a canceled. Lot to say. And then Jesse comes along. Oh, the person you didn't want me to see. You know, like this is great. Yeah. You know, it's like it's it's just it's for TV and cocktail parties are just for it, that they have them because they're great for drama. And you know, and usually a show is like, oh, we already have enough. You know, when they're making a show, you know, they they're they're storybooking their show as it's being written. And, you know, it's like, OK, you know, you know, we got this. We got that. We're, we're good. We don't need a cocktail party. We're good with the drama. Mm-hmm. So it, to me, it was all that was just them making TV. And that was Joey doing his job. I don't think Joey would have handled that way, way if it was totally up to him. So I think he was just being a good team player. So then on the inverse, because like right now I'm kind of rooting for Daisy, where I'm like, I like how Daisy doesn't seem like she's been fully enveloped in the bubble per se, that I'm like, I like that she sat him down and was like, hey, in this period of time, like, I like you a lot. I just don't know if I'm there yet. But do you think that that helps or hinders for the actual experience of The Bachelor? Like, do you think that she's going to end up changing her mind and being like, I am falling in love with you or Mm, like? Probably. I thought Daisy did what Maria didn't do, which is like she she did it in a way that didn't make her come across as, well, you know what you signed up for. Yeah. 
And, you know, like, are, are you doing it for power or, you know, or days is like, I'm just keeping it real. Like that, I've, I've only been here for a few weeks and I'm evolving my feelings and I, I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of my uh, ladies here are being like, I love you. And I'm just not there yet. Yeah. You know, whether that, whether she's doing it as a power move or not, I think she, I, she, it comes across as authentic. It comes off genuine. Yeah. yeah. I really, in that moment, I, I had a lot of respect yeah. for her that you, she wasn't just doing it to stay one more week. Yeah. You know, she wanted to be real with him and the way she did it was like kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, she was really knew what she wanted to say, knew why she was saying it. Whereas I just felt like Maria was just sort of like a whirlwind of emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe, you know? Yeah. Um, but I really did respect Daisy and I, now I think I'm rooting for her. Daisy's always, I, uh, I, I want Daisy not to win. Cause I think I want to see her as the, the bachelorette. bachelorette. Oh, yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Um, I love her. Yeah, she's, I love great. Her. she's really yeah. great. They got some good choices. I think Maria um, would be a really fun season though. She, she, I think she would get a lot of the men to potentially be dramatic in the best possible way. Oh yeah. yeah. It would be, a, it would be a fun season yeah. for sure. Uh, I think, I think, I think Kelsey would be good too. I, you know, I think Daisy and Maria have kind of dominated the, the airtime, but I, I feel like Kelsey has good bachelorette potential. And, uh, and we keep hearing about the ending and how it's, oh, it's never happened before. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we've been led astray or that's true. But I think we, until we know about this uh, ending, I mean, that's going to play a, a huge role into who the next Bachelorette was. I mean, we didn't, no one, people forgot that Becca Kufrin was on the show, even though she was Ari's front runner. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden that ending, I mean, she was the only choice for Bachelorette, mm -hmm. given how things played out Very on that cool. season. So like, <laughs> you know, we keep hearing about this ending. So I think until we know who's involved in that ending, I mean, it would be hard pressed to see the Bachelorette now maybe not, maybe not come from it. But then- then you have to anticipate the heartbreak. Like uh, I thought, um, uh, Zach season. Who was his runner up? Um, wasn't it Gabby? Gabby. Yeah, I thought she was an amazing batch rep. I heard that she was still genuinely like hurting from the breakup. They're gonna have to film AFR, hmm. and they're gonna start filming the batch right right away. So like, is is Joey's runner up, whoever they are, emotionally ready to be the bachelorette? You know, so that that is a variable they have to consider. I think you kind of, uh, you put a little crack in my crush on Joey. Because I really, I believed all of his sincerity. Oh, those are so valid. The way he looks at them, the way he talks to him. And if it's real that this was, we just saw the, oh, he just, this is really about him. And then it makes sense why he's been talking about these fears so much. You know, he really is just thinking about himself. Oh, I don't know that I can handle I, I'm that. Not, I'm not trying to ruin the Joey, but I, I it's no matter what. As someone who's been a part of the show, I just, what I don't like are the overreactions, both good or bad. You know, when people get vilified and it's just like, they're just, especially on The Bachelor. I mean, it's one thing for Tom Sandoval and Rachel to have an affair and conduct themselves in the way they're conducting themselves. On The Bachelor, they make villains out of fucking nothing. Mm -hmm. And just the most- Just regular people. Regular people <laughs> saying regular things. And, and having normal reactions to bizarre situations yes. and they get vilified for that. So I like to offer a little levity and realism to these overreactions. And the same with like, oh, this person can do no wrong and they're God's gift to humanity. I'm sure Joey's a swell guy and everything I heard about the guy, he seems like a really swell guy, but he's a human being. You know, he's a human being who probably can get irritated and has had a bad day and hasn't had an, ha and hasn't handled every situation perfectly and has given someone the ick before. You know what I'm saying? He's a human being. And I'm just here to maybe point out <laughs> the human side of Joey, even though we're acting like he was literally created by women from God. You know, it's just like, okay, let's this, calm down. This season has also had it seems to me at least just so much more trauma than there has been in past seasons. And <laughs> Poor Joey just looks like he's had the life sucked out of him. Yep. You know, like in the beginning, he just had so much more color in his face. And now he's just like. It's like Obama after eight years of presidency, he, you know? Yeah, okay. it's like it's like when you look at a president before and after they've been president. That's how I feel yeah. Joey is before no, and after he's been bachelor. the lead bachelor. of the bachelor is the hardest thing I ever did. It was mu like Grand Special Forces, a totally different animal in an eight day. But like the emotional and physical torture that it is to be the lead of this show. You are responsible for your emotions and 30 other people 
as the bachelor, I think it's a little like you are you are giving less grace. Mm -hmm. You are given less rope to, you know, it's it's you you are highly criticized. You have to carry the show. You get no sleep. It it is so fucking hard. And it is a nine week fucking marathon Jeez. of you're just trying to survive. It is truly the tort I mean, and, and Peter mentioned on traders when they're like, oh, do you think was this more fun like harder than and, and oh, Kate yeah. was just like, oh, it's 25 women trying to make out with you. And and Peter was like, no, it fucking sucks. <laughs> it, it does suck because you generally like two or three. And then you have a bunch of other nervous people with nothing to say who just want to throw their tongues down your throat and you don't want to look like an asshole. So you're like, I guess stick your tongue down my throat, you know, and like, again, I mean, if you really want to get into it, you know, you can like, it, there's some like the bachelors put in some very uncomfortable situations that they are kind of like expected to just deal with. And in other environments, you'd be like, that's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've never thought about it like yeah, that. Yeah, me neither. And it, it's a fucking nightmare. So yeah, I am. I empathize with Joey, and I do think he's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. But I'm. I'm just. I just that that one scene. I was like, ah, a human being, you know, not being a little selfish, making it a little bit about him. And to and, be fair, you did ask for that. You didn't yeah, want that. You no, said, I yeah. want to see more human version, wanna, not this yeah, cookie I, cutter. No, it was like it, it was interesting to me. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Now, 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 now we're seeing. Now we're seeing someone who actually cares. Yeah. You know, he's just not. Thank you for sharing. Those feelings are valid. It's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> to yeah. go back to your point, Leah, though, it's, it really is like, imagine every single time you get like a one-on-one -on -one and you're like, great, we're going to get to have this fun date. And then we have to sit down for this candlelit dinner and it's just trauma dump. Trauma yeah, dump. No, he really looks like he's had the life sucked out of him. I mean, he just looks like... Like every what? first date is like everybody on their best behavior and like, oh, I want to like keep everything contained. And then it's like, no, no, we're going to sit down. And actually, so when I was three, <laughs> yeah, like, let me start from the beginning. It's a lot. It's yeah. wild. And I mean, even Joey says when he's talking to Maria, he's like, last week was so special to me. So he's bringing up like, can we just have a nice yeah, like, good... We had fun last week. <laughs> Shut up. You know, like... Why do you have to ruin a good thing? <laughs> um, who do you think is uh, going to win? Who do you think is going to be the number one? <sighs> I think he's going to pick Kelsey. I think so, too. Yeah. I mean, Kelsey? Kelsey. What gives you that, that feeling? I mean, ever since the beginning of the season, he's clearly had a connection with her that um, she's not the biggest personality, or at least that's what we're seeing. And yet we still see that connection. Mm -hmm. And we still see Joey commenting on her, mentioning her. And it just seems different. You know, and like, I guess, you know, I know like the audience really likes Maria and the audience really likes Daisy. You know, we see those people's natural charisma. And, and are we confusing our, you know, the audiences like for these people versus Joey's? You know, credit to, to Maria, like the two on one, I just immediately was like, well, Maria doesn't win. Because it's just like, if Maria were go on a two on one and win, that would be unprecedented. But maybe she's doing unprecedented shit, mm -hmm. you know? And then Daisy just seems like they just want her to be bachelorette, <laughs> you know, where it's like, so, uh, I don't know, Kelsey... You know, I can see that. Geez. I can see it. Yeah, you called Kelsey from the beginning. There seems like a, a an ease with Kelsey and, and, and Joey. Yeah. You know, that, you know, and sometimes as The Bachelor, like, you can. You can have fun with someone and you can be attracted to someone and you can be like, oh, well, I don't, I don't know if we could be in a, rela you know, mm -hmm. there's, um, so I don't know. I could be, it could, it could be, the only person I know it's not is Rachel. Yeah. And no offense to Rachel, but like, where did she come from? Where's like what is wh where's this connection? I don't remember. I think it's because they both live in Hawaii. So in my head, I'm like she's there for like a proximity, like potential. Oh, that's my take. Is, does Joey still live in Hawaii? I think he did, right? Or I he... moved back. I think he oh, said. Okay, so then I feel like they all end up moving to San Diego, regardless of where <laughs> they originate from. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I just don't. Re I just I'm not aware of Rachel and Joey. I know they had a one on one. And even on that one-on-one, -on -one, they talked as if there were th things that are not being shown. And I'm sure if you talk to Rachel, she'd be like, yeah, you're, they're not showing any of our stuff, which is entirely possible. I think similar but... to Johnny and Amy from Love is Blind, maybe they just have no drama going on, so yeah. they're not showing it because it's not good TV. But they do seem to but have like, something. There's no drama between Kelsey and, and Joey and Daisy and Joey. And I see yeah. that chemistry. Yeah. I thought Joey had more chemistry with uh, the two women who went home this episode hmm. than Rachel. Jen and Kelsey T. Yeah. Jen I was surprised about. I thought there was maybe more of a future for Jen. Yeah, yeah. same. She seems like a lovely person, but I just didn't 
Like, how did you get to top four? I just remember them dancing and that's about it. Did they do flamenco? Wasn't that? Please tell know. me that was Rachel. And then Rachel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to think I was like, Am wait. I even thinking of the right person? <laughs> it's tough. There's yeah. a lot of people. A so, couple Kelsey's. Can we get cast up? You know. <laughs> yeah, I think unless something happens with him and Maria in next week's episode, I think the final three's got to be Maria, Kelsey, and Daisy. Well, those seem to be the strongest connection. Yeah, but unless something goes Maria on. Maria definitely Maria. is doing the whole, like... She's giving me campaigning. I don't know. And I also think she's just going to be too much for Joey to handle. She could. Yeah. I, I could see herself eliminate. Same. You know. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or making almost Joey eliminate her. Because it can be, you know, it would, you know, if he has other connections, it's like, I get it. You know, it's like on the flip side, you know, it's like, okay, no, I don't. To your point, Sierra, Joey is very limited in what he can and say and do. Mm-hmm. All, all he can do is empathize more. Yeah. This is, it just doesn't land when he's just like, yeah, no, you should be happy. We had a date you're last here. week and you're, and you're here <laughs> and you're one of my finalists. I'm with you because she Maria did actually make a really good point, too, because it's like how little you actually spend with that no person. Time. And we're like, what about to do, bring you back home to my parents? And um, I've seen you six times, mm-hmm. twice alone. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it is kind of a weird dynamic where you're like, well, this is my forever person and I choose him. But I should also contain all of my emotions because, you know, I want to look this kind of way where I'm like, yeah, I, I get where she was coming from. And I think it's a difficult situation to be in regardless. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't think that that's going to be his final choice, just even based off of that conversation alone. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up. Wow, what an episode. So much to talk so about. Much talk. So much fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tara, thank you for joining us. Thank you for so having lovely. me. This can is you my favorite thing. Remind our audience uh, about your book, where they can find your book, all the other things that you're promoting. Yeah, sure. Um, so the book that I have out right now is called Glow in the Fucking Dark. And it's all self-care tools, rituals to bring out your most authentic self, but but practical. Like you don't need to blow up your life. These are small things you could do to improve. Um, and so it's everywhere, every bookstore, um, not every bookstore, many bookstores. And then if people want to talk more with me, they just sign up for my newsletter, which is taraschuster.com slash newsletter, or just a quick Google of Tara Schuster and newsletter. Amazing. You sign right out of it. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and Google that. Uh, we appreciate you on. You'll definitely have to come back. Thank you for sharing that uh, little uh, behind the scenes with Rachel. That was really something. I mean, you really saw it. It was, I said, you know, in Hamilton, the song about uh, being in the room where it happened. Yeah. I was in the room where it happened <laughs> yeah. for Scandival. And yes. it was the best thing. I had a book come out. I fell in love last year. The best thing that happened to me was being there that night. <laughs> I wish you would have seen the alleged altercation between Sheena. Well, it was Rachel. even more bizarre to me because they were, I have pictures of all three of us hugging each other and it's so fun and everyone's having a good time. So to know where that night ended up, like Sheena and Raquel were like, great, great together. It was very shocking. Do you believe Sheena or do you believe Rachel when it comes to the altercation? I believe Sheena. I do. I think to file a restraining order against anyone is such a severe, weird reaction mm-hmm. yeah. to anything. Well, yeah, I, I, I kind of always said I kind of believe Rachel and think it was really shitty of her. Lame. To and lame that. to to take file legal to take legal action I mean, against I, Sheena. I would believe that something happened. It was just such an overreaction, the legal yeah. that I was like, oh, this whole thing is an overreaction. Mm-hmm. And and she was spiraling. She, I mean, I witnessed it that night. You know. Yeah. Well, Rachel, if you're out there, we uh, we'd love to have you come on and shine on this uh, and do the very thing that Tom Sandoval couldn't. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we will give you that opportunity if you're out there. To let her know, people. We're trying to get a hold of her. We've been uh, blocked. We haven't actually been blocked by her. I just don't know if we're getting through. Maybe we are. I don't know. There's no reception. <laughs> the, there, it is unclear if we've made contact. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we've been sending out the this the, the signal. There's no seat we don't receipt. Know. Yeah. There's no receipt. <laughs> they don't have their send receipts on. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you guys for listening. We'll be back on Thursday. Uh, we have just returning. Uh, to our intro of going deeper, uh, obviously we we in, did this interview in between uh, episodes being dropped. So uh, on Thursday we'll have Jess come back to address her finally meeting Jimmy and a little bit more tea she shares about the rest of her castmates and interactions, uh, what's going on. And then we have 
a reality TV royalty, Candy Burroughs, with us doing what we like to call her Bravo exit interview. Uh, and we get into all things uh, Candy Burris and her career as a housewife. What's next? Um, you know, some tea about her. Phaedra, I'm so Phaedra. excited. I mean, everything we talk about is out all there. Yeah, but, uh, but, but it's it's nicer to hear it straight from straight yeah. from the mouth of yeah, the one who lived it. Yeah, and know? I hope you guys tune in and enjoy because it's a great episode. So uh, that's that. Uh, anything else? And then ask Nick on Mondays. Ask Nick on Mondays. You're crazy. Bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.